Hi guys, it's Kino. Welcome to another video. So in today's pick a card, we are going to be finding out what will happen the next time you see the person you're thinking of. This reading is going to be for all types of connections, whether that be romantic or platonic. And you could even watch this reading as like the first time you see them, if the person you're thinking of is somebody um, whom you haven't met in person yet, or like somebody unidentified, that's totally fine as well. Um, so there is a lot, there's a lot of different stuff that I want to cover in the reading today. So I think just before we get into it, I will give like a detailed breakdown of what we're looking at in this reading. Um, I'm probably only going to say it here in the intro. Um, I don't think I'm going to repeat it like at the start of every group because it might be kind of long. So if you guys are interested in knowing like the details of what exactly will be covered in this reading, then sit tight. So the first thing that we are going to look at is the current energy of the connection between you and the person that you're thinking of. And I'll take into consideration both the 3D connection and the 5D connection. So we'll see what the energies are like between you right now, how you're feeling about each other, what you're wanting from each other and things like that. Um, and you can also think of this part of the reading as like an energy check to make sure that it is in fact um, the right group for you. And then we're gonna look at the circumstances of your next meeting. So who is initiating this? Is it you or the other person? Or is it neither and you just bumped into each other or something like that? Um, if this is a planned meeting, how is it decided that you're gonna meet? So the communications leading up to that. Um, and where you're gonna be meeting this person. And then of course, we're gonna see what will happen, you know, what's gonna be talked about, what are you gonna do together? And we're also gonna see how your person is gonna be feeling during the meeting. How will they feel about you? How will they feel about what's going on? And all of that kind of stuff. So that's what we're gonna be looking at in this part of the reading and today I'm also going to be doing an extended reading if you guys are interested in watching that too. In the extended reading we'll be finding out when this meeting is going to happen and also if this meeting will lead to anything. So as a result of this next meeting, um, is there going to be any changes in this connection? Is there going to be any next steps in this connection? And if so, what is that? What's going to be changing? Or what is the future of this connection? And then for that, we will also look at time frames. So um, if this next meeting is leading to any changes, what is that and when is it going to happen? Kind of thing. So whew, I feel like that was very long, <laughs> but I wanted to just let you guys know exactly what you're getting into. But yeah, that's it. So without further ado, let's take a look at your options now. There are four readings for you guys to choose from today and each reading we're going to be using a different tarot deck and there's also a different stone on top of each deck to help you choose. Um, as you can see, this is what they look like from the back, but in just a second, I'm going to be showing you one card from each deck so that you can also see what the front artwork looks like. And today I'm going to show you guys the Two of Cups because that's a card that talks about relationships and that shows two people coming together and I think that's quite fitting. So yeah, let's give you guys a close-up look at each of your options. Option number one, your stone is pink amethyst, your deck is the likely tarot, and this is the two of cups. Option number two, your stone is iolite, your deck is the blissful dolphin tarot, and this is the two of cups. Option number three, your stone is Tangerine Quartz, your deck is the White Fly Tarot, and here is the Two of Cups. And option number four, your stone is Fuchsite, your deck is the Way of the Panda Tarot, and here is the Two of Cups. So just in case you guys need a bit more time to pick, here are all of your options laid out side by side so that you can compare them and see which one is calling to you the most. Take all the time you need to pick. You can pause the video if you need to. I'm gonna go ahead and get started with number one. Hi, number ones. So if you guys chose the pink amethyst and the likely tarot, this is going to be a reading all about the next time you see the person that you're thinking about. So basically, 
We're going to get right into it. We're going to look at a bunch of oracle cards and then we're going to look at a bunch of tarot cards and we are going to see what is going on. If you guys want to know a more detailed description of what is going to be covered in this reading, I did touch on it in the intro of this video and there will be um, a timestamp in the description box and in the comments if you want like an in-depth list of what we're going to be covering in this reading. Um, but basically, in this reading here, we're going to see the current energies of the connection and then everything leading up to your next meeting. And then, of course, what is going to happen during that next meeting. And then there is going to be an extended reading today. And in that extended reading, we're going to see when the next meeting is happening and what is going to happen after that. Basically, what is this next meeting going to lead to? Is there going to be some kind of change or some kind of development in this connection? as a result and if so when will that be happening so yes without further ado let's get right into it and as i said we're going to start off by looking at a bunch of oracle cards all from different decks so to start off oh okay these are upside down <laughs> to start off we have surface then we have abundance with some grapes We have goals, hope, dreams, aspirations, ideas, and we also have independence, self-sufficiency, freedom, sovereignty, ancestors, remembrance, sea snake, letting go, and finally, I have support. Okay, so as usual, I think I'm just going to go through these in order and we will start over here with your surface card. Actually, first I want to see <laughs> if there's any like zodiac signs that are present because those could be confirmation for you guys if you hear your zodiac sign called out or the zodiac signs of the person you're thinking of, like their major placements. If not, that's totally fine, but that can definitely be an important extra layer of confirmation for those who may need it. So. On this grape card, we do have the water symbol. Um, so that could be referring to Cancer, Scorpio, or Pisces. Um, it could also be talking about the season of summer. So you or this person could be born in the summer or maybe you met in the summer. And then we also have um, a Sagittarius symbol on this grape card. So Sagittarius could be significant too or Sagittarius season. Um, and then we also have the numbers 23 and 30 so maybe you or this person are of the age 23 or 30 or you met when one of you was at those ages again these are just here for extra confirmation so no worries if you don't um if those don't apply to you but i thought i would just mention those in the beginning so now real thing <laughs> let's start off with this surface card here um also, I just saw 333 on the camera timer, and we do have threes on both of these cards, so that could be a significant number to you guys, or one that you do see repeatedly as a synchronicity um, that is trying to let you know about this connection, or you could start to see that number very, very frequently, repeating threes when your next meeting is coming up soon. Okay, finally, <laughs> sorry, surface, surface. Um, Actually, what is coming to my mind with this surface card is the word plateau. Like when I look at this straight line, I'm thinking of something that has plateaued. So this could be a connection that is sort of at um, a standstill right now. You might not be in contact with this person, or even if you are in contact, it might just feel like things are not really... Um, things are not really progressing with them. And I think it's also you know, interesting that we have the word surface here because this makes me think of, you know, something that is surface level or something where you're just scratching the surface. And so regardless of how long you have known this person, it might still feel like you're just getting to know each other or like there's so much more that you want to know about them. You're just scratching the surface or you still want to be a lot closer to them than you are now. And there might be this feeling for some of you like for the amount of time that we've known each other or for the amount of time that we've been involved i wish we could be a lot closer than we are now so there might be some frustration 
um, that goes along with this kind of slowness that you're in or this kind of standstill that you're in. And with abundance right next to this, with these grapes, um, I think that you guys definitely feel a lot of potential um, from this person and a lot of potential from this connection. And, and I think it's both. Like you feel potential in the connection, like you guys could become something really, really amazing. And I also think that you two see a lot of potential in each other with this goals and independence. I think you guys both really look up to each other. Um, you would both think of each other as very talented, very capable people. And there's this feeling of like, I want to see what you achieve or, you know, I can't wait to see what you achieve and I want to be there supporting you or even like, I want to be involved um, in your journey and in the achievement of your goals. So. I think when you think about this person in this connection, it seems like you can have such a bright future, like you could get along so well, like you could do all of these amazing things together and, and, you know, become so close, but we're still just scratching the surface or we've hit a plateau, but there's this feeling like, there's this feeling like this can't be it. And I think it's really interesting that we have Sagittarius and water energy here because, you know, Sagittarius loves expanding and reaching for heights and like wants to go higher and higher and higher and then we have water which is about emotion or intuition so it's almost like you guys are feeling intuitively like there is so much more to come like there's such higher levels of closeness of intimacy of amazing experiences to have with this person and us as individuals we have so much you know so many more goals to reach in our life like this can't be it the dynamic that we're currently in, or maybe for some of you, this ending that we've come to, this can't be it. There has to be so much more. So I feel a little bit of frustration because there's this feeling of like, we should have gotten closer by now, or we should have reached like a certain stage in our connection by now, or are we ever going to reach that stage? I know that we would be so amazing, but are we ever going to reach that level? Um, and I think that maybe you guys are at a place within this connection where you... And this is like, I don't really like the way the wording is coming to me, but the way I heard it was like resorting to focusing on yourself. And obviously I don't really like that wording because we don't resort to self care or self love. It's, it's something that we should put first, but maybe there was, maybe you're in this energy right now, or there was a point in this connection where you felt disappointed with the way things were and you were like, okay, I guess, I guess I'll focus on myself right now, which is kind of like a negative headspace to be in. But like, I've been there. I think a lot of us have been there. So this is definitely not a judgment. Um, but maybe that's just for some of you, for others, it was like, you know what? Okay. I'm not going to stress about it. That's fine. You do you. I'm going to do me. I'm going to focus on myself. You're going to focus on your goals and you're going to focus on your independence. It's funny with this cat here, you know, cats can be very, um, <laughs> they can be very hot and cold. So there might've been mixed signals in this connection. You know, like sometimes cats will be really snuggly and really affectionate. And then two seconds later, they're like, leave me alone. Don't touch me. Don't look at me. They're very much like that. They want to come in your room and then they want to leave and then they want to come back in and then they want to leave. Don't even get me started on my cat Baffy. <laughs> She's a Gemini, so it's even worse. But yeah, there could have been something like that in this connection where there were moments where you felt like, oh my gosh, we're getting really close. Oh my gosh, we're about to have a breakthrough. We're about to move things to the next level. And then this person pulled away. Or maybe there were a lot of moments where like, their words and their actions didn't match like they maybe when they spoke they spoke very highly of their feelings for you but then their actions fell short it could have also been the opposite where they act very lovingly towards you they act very interested very emotionally invested but then with their words they say they're not like oh example if this is a romantic connection they keep saying to you i don't want anything serious but then they're being like really affectionate towards you um maybe they're acting like jealous if you're with other people or they're like texting you good morning every freaking day and you know it's like there's some kind of gap there it's like what do you want and you know more and more as i go through the energy of this reading 
um, I could sense that there is some kind of frustration from you guys, even with this straight line here. Maybe you're like, I just want you to give it to me straight. I just want, I just want things to be straightforward. Um, so yeah, I can sense some frustration here, but I do think that with these two cards together, there is an interpretation of you guys saying like, you know what, I'm going to focus on my own abundance right now. Maybe you're going to focus on your career or focus on like a passion of yours, focus on skills or hobbies or your school or just bettering yourself, just healing and growing and bettering yourself. Um, and I think you guys have come a long way in that, but what I see here with ancestors and the sea snake with remembrance and letting go, um, I feel like you guys, and I think this is mutual where you and this person are kind of having a hard time forgetting each other. And I think you might be like remembering this person a lot, thinking about this person a lot. Not only that, but even though it's like even though you're really trying to focus on yourself, you might keep like seeing signs of this person or their energy is just brought back to your attention. And it's it's been difficult to let go. And some of you guys, it's like maybe you were hoping at some point that if I just focus on my own fulfillment and focus on reaching my own goals, I'll reach a point where I can move on and I don't care about this connection anymore. But I feel like that hasn't been the case because I think that you guys have reached a point where you've healed a lot and you've grown a lot on your journey and you have achieved a lot of your goals and you have made a lot of changes in your life um, to be more in alignment with your dream lifestyle and to be more focused on the things you want to achieve. I feel like you've made amazing progress in like your personal development, but still you find yourself thinking about this person. Still you find yourself wanting to scratch the surface more, wanting to pass this plateau and wanting to reach that amazing future that you know you can have with them. And you know what, with this I have support card, like your spiritual team is saying they support that. They support this union. They support your memories. They support your desires. They're saying like, that's okay. Like if you guys are in this frustrated place of like, I felt like things weren't working out. I tried to move on. I tried to focus on myself and I did and I did amazing things and I'm really happy with where I'm at in life, but I still freaking think of them and I still want to see them and I still want to be with them or I still want to achieve something with them. Your spiritual team is saying, okay, like that's okay. That's valid. Let's, let's hold on to this connection. Then let's, let's keep wishing for it. Let's keep trying to move towards it because you're right. What you felt intuitively, this Sagittarius and water energy that we still have a long way to go, that we still have so much to learn about each other, that we could become so much closer, that we could have an amazing future together. Like you're freaking right. <laughs> and we and we support your wishes and we support your emotions and let's keep wishing for this connection. Let's keep hoping for it because it is an amazing one. You're very right about that. And <laughs> let's let's overcome these difficulties. So I, I feel like this card is saying that you have full support from your spiritual team, which is really, really sweet. And I was just um I was just about to sip some tea. I'm drinking throat coat tea, which is very um a very acquired taste, um, but I'm just getting over like a, a sore throat, which you can probably tell from my voice. But um, the tea bag like tag says from a small seed, a mighty trunk may grow, which I think is really cool because it's like you've planted your seeds in this connection and it's time for like a sturdy foundation to grow. So I think if you guys are feeling like this can't be it, it's because it's not it, you know? I think you're completely right in feeling that way. And this is not one of those situations where like you can just forget this person or like the more you heal, the more you work on yourself. Like, no, you still care for this person and that's okay. And it was never like, it was never an either or anyway. And I feel like it's worded a lot like that in reading sometimes. And maybe I've contributed to this as well and I need to check myself, but it's not like, you either want someone or you're healed and accomplished and fulfilled, you know, like, oh, I want you, but I'm going to go work on myself and then I won't want you anymore. Like, no, sometimes, <laughs> sometimes you grow and you reach all of these goals 
and you're still, you still have longings, you still have desires. Oh my God, a human desiring things. Oh my God. So yeah, it's okay. It's good. We support it. Your spiritual team supports it. And let's go for it. Yes? So I'm now I'm going to drink my throat coat. Oh my God, that tastes so weird but it's good for me. Okay, so <laughs> we're gonna get into the tarot that you guys chose, which I love this deck, by the way. I love any deck that has this like, woo, uh, whatever you call it, iridescent edges, especially when I'm filming at night. I feel like the light really like twinkles off of it. So let's go into group number one. So now we're getting into your next meeting and this is gonna include um, who initiates the next meeting? Is it you or them or neither? Is it like a, a chance encounter? Um, how and where you're going to meet and what's going to happen? Group number one, what do they need to know? about the events leading up to their next meeting with this person as well as what will happen in this next meeting. So we have the Ace of Swords and actually right away I want to take a clarifier for the Ace of Swords. We have the Eight of Cups. Okay. Then we have the Five of Wands, okay. Ooh, the Lovers. Okay, so I feel like at this point, we've made it to your meeting. So let's see what happens. Then we have the Three of Wands. The Ace of Pentacles. And the Five of Cups, okay. And then at the bottom of the deck we have the King of Cups. Ah, okay. Okay, this message is actually quite clear, which I'm very happy about. I feel like when messages come out very clearly, it is a sign for you guys that like, whatever signs or synchronicities you're seeing about this connection or whatever messages you're receiving from your guides, um, just accept them as they are. And I mean, without overthinking too much about if you're interpreting it correctly or not, or thinking like, is this real or in my head, just accept the messages as you get them because your higher self and your spiritual team do communicate to you very clearly and very directly. And what you think first is the accurate message. So if you get a little intuitive hit, like this person is thinking about you, just take that. Yes, they're thinking about me. Thank you. You know, rather than like, but are they really? I'm not sure. Um, you know, take it at face value, I think maybe is the um, expression. But okay, let's get into this very clear messages. Um, the first card that we got here is the Ace of Swords, which told me right away, someone is going to be reaching out to the other person. I pictured it as like, like a text or a direct message. This is direct communication. So this is not like, um, and it's private as well. So it's not like, you know, publicly commenting on one of your posts or like sending you a, a Snapchat that also got sent to a bunch of other people. It's like a direct and private message. So this could be a text. This could be a DM, could even be a phone call, actually. Um, it, I, heck, it could even be an email, <laughs> but it's like, yeah, a private and direct message. And then the reason I wanted to pull a clarifier about this is because 
I wanted to know who's going to initiate this. Um, if it was you messaging them or them messaging you. So when I pulled the clarifier, the question that I had in my head was, um, are you going to be the one to initiate it? And then we got the eight of cups, which means no, because the eight of cups is like, you know, walk away, leave it alone, basically. Um, so no, you would not be the one to initiate this. This would be them initiating it to you. I also want to pay attention to the numbers here. We have a number one and a number eight. So if there's been some like new beginning in your career or like there is going to be or you're thinking about it, um, they might or even if there's like you've recently had a career change, I feel like they might use um, they might use that as like a conversation starter, you know, like, oh, congrats on the promotion or, um, hey, I saw you're working at blah, blah, blah. I know someone there, you know, like use that as a conversation starter. Um, alternatively, um, oh, we even have abundance here. Like they could, the reason that maybe they thought of reaching out to you is because they saw that you were doing really well. They saw that you were becoming successful and they felt really inspired by that. Um, if you guys feel like you haven't reached this stage yet, then then your spiritual team is kind of letting it slip that there is abundance in your future, or maybe there is a career change or transition in their future. Um, but yeah, they're gonna use something about your career or something about your success as a conversation starter, or that's what um, that's what like urged them to reach out to you. And I I'm know that this is like a turnip or a beet or something oh maybe this is an onion but my first thought when i saw this was actually figs like this looks like a fig to me um which figs make me think about abundance but i feel like i feel like with this turnip here being a root vegetable it's like you're being encouraged to like stay grounded and i'm hearing play it cool like you might be really really excited about this person reaching out but like you're being encouraged to just play it cool or you're gonna want to play it cool for some reason um and just the way the water is trickling from leaf to leaf it's like the water has to go through a lot of stages before it finally reaches the bottom so you or this person might be really really thinking before you say anything that could divulge your emotions. Basically, I feel like you and this person both have a lot of strong feelings for each other, but it's like you're careful not to let that slip too quickly or not to let that show too much. And I, I feel it comes from some place of like wanting to play it cool or like Maybe there's like a little bit of shyness or even embarrassment in how strong you feel for each other Especially if it's been a while, especially if this is like you're still in the early stages of a relationship but Yeah, for some reason we don't want to We don't want to let on how strong We're feeling with the eight of cups here. Maybe it's like we feel like we should have moved on by now but anyway, um, not only is this person directly reaching out to you, but they are going to ask to see you Okay, but with the five of wands here, <laughs> this is about conflict and immediately I knew this is talking about like a conflict in your schedules. So I feel like, and also what I made a mental note of after this came out was that I think it took a little bit more time for the lover's card to appear. You guys might know I do pay attention to how the deck is behaving when I shuffle it and I feel like generally the cards were coming out like shoop, 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 pretty fast but i noticed that there was a little bit of a delay between the five of wands and the lovers and you know i feel like the lovers is representing the card where you guys finally meet so it's like i feel like from the moment they reach out to you it's it might be kind of quite some time before you actually meet because it's like your schedules just don't match up like maybe you're really busy or they're really busy or like maybe you have weekends off but they always work on weekends or vice versa so i feel like it's just really hard to um it's really hard to like set up a date with this person and there might be also some like miscommunications 
or like, oh, sorry, I just saw this now. Are you still free? No, <laughs> like, no, I've put something in my schedule because I didn't hear back from you. Oh, shoot, sorry, I don't really check this that often. Can you message me here instead? Like they're, you know, because this is also kind of like a frustrating or annoying kind of energy. So there could be a lot of, you know, there could be a lot of that as well. Um, just like miscommunications or like conflicts in schedule and things like that. But with the sunflowers here, I feel like both of you, you'll stay like optimistic and happy at least towards each other. You'll be like, oh, no problem, like smiling emoji. But maybe on the inside, you're like, oh man, like I, I want to see you soon. Like, can we just get our shit together <laughs> and like plan this meeting properly? But on the surface, you'll be like, no worries at all. Like, take your time, get back to me whenever you can, like, you know, and that's, I think that's also, like, playing it cool, you know, like, I'm breezy, I can see you whenever, but really, you're like, ah, I want to see you, um, so that's kind of the feeling that I'm getting, and then we move on to the lovers, which represents, um, the day that you're finally meeting, um, I feel like once the date is decided, it's going to be really, really heavily on, your minds like you're going to be thinking about this person a lot you might even like have really vivid dreams about them in the days leading up to your meeting and i'm seeing with this uh lover's card that um the environment first of all there's not going to be any other people so this is not like hey come to this party or like come hang out with me and my friends it's like let's catch up just you and me it's just the two of you i'm seeing that with the two birds and especially um when there's only two beings in a lover's card, I feel like it's really emphasized, okay, it's just the two of you because um, quite often there's a third energy or a third being in the lover's card. Like, um, you know, very often there's like an angel in the sky or there's three humans <laughs> on the card or something like that. So when there's just two in the lover's card, I'm like, oh shit, it's really just the two of you. Okay, okay. <laughs> so you're definitely getting some time alone with this person and if this is like a romantic interest i think that the uh location of your meeting and just like the overall atmosphere of your meeting it could definitely be seen as a date you know when like someone asks you to hang out and you go and you're like is this a date because <laughs> it's just like the location that was chosen and like the ambiance of it all and like you know it just kind of feels like a date so with the lovers here it's definitely that kind of vibe so maybe you're going to like an, an upscale restaurant like i don't think this is like a coffee a casual like let's get coffee kind of thing i feel like you would be having like a nice dinner or going to like an art gallery together or i don't know maybe that's casual for some people but <laughs> it feels the vibe just feels romantic and there's this vague feeling of like is this a date is this not a date um if you guys if this is not a romantic connection i think you'll just kind of be surprised by like how much thought this person put into the location and the activities of your meeting it's like they're trying to show you a good time um and they've really made effort for you guys to be like surrounded by beautiful or even opulent things when you're together this person might offer to pay for you as well but it feels like they're really treating you it feels like they're really wanting to show you an experience and it feels like they've really put thought into this so that's why if it's romantic you're like you know if this was just two friends catching up i like you would not do all of this you know you're kind of having that thought in your mind and that's why again it's so important for you guys to take what you intuit <laughs> at face value because yes they probably planned it out to feel like a date so <laughs> like there's no need, like, you're not crazy if you feel that way, you know, friends don't, well, maybe they do, you know, everyone's different, but <laughs> you're definitely feeling um, the romantic vibes, and I love that you guys are coming through on this card at birds, as birds, because it lets me know that you're going to be very talkative with each other, if it's been a long time since you've seen this person, I definitely think you don't need to worry about any awkwardness, or like, not knowing what to talk about, because you're gonna pick up um, right where you left off. Not only do we have birds, but this is Gemini card, this is an air card. That's all about 
facilitating communication and sharing ideas. I think you guys are going to have an amazing conversation with the three of wands. Also, this is you like feeling confident and coming out of your shell. So, um, yeah, the conversation is going to be flowing. Um, maybe the drinks are going to be flowing. Maybe there's like wine with the grapes here, or maybe you're drinking grape juice. I don't know. doesn't matter. Um, <laughs> but <clears throat> okay, let's talk about the rest of the cards now because now we want to know what is going to happen during this meeting and i do feel i feel like this definitely confirms your initial conversation would be something about like your careers the things that you've been accomplishing especially too because we have the goals and independence energy um but i think a lot of your conversations is going to be catching up about like you know what you've been up to since and what you've achieved and also talking about like your future plans and i think a lot of it has to do with your respective pursuits of abundance and i can just see you guys like sharing what you've been working on sharing what's to come sharing your victories sharing your accomplishments and like congratulating each other and celebrating each other like wow that's so amazing i'm so proud of you i'm so happy for you you're so cool, you're so talented, um, you're going to be sharing a lot of that. And I think you're both in this energy the next time you see each other where you really have a lot going for yourselves. And it's really, really fun to exchange that with each other. And I think you guys like, you guys get a lot of inspiration from each other as well. And also like, I think talking to this person, like, makes things real for you. How can I describe it? Okay, so you guys have grown a lot and you've made a lot of progress and you've accomplished a lot. And when you see this person again, there's something about you because you're catching up with them. You filling them in on what you've been up to and you filling them in on what you've accomplished because you're speaking it and putting into words. It's like it finally hits you like, oh shit, I've done a lot. <laughs> like, oh shit, my life is amazing. Oh shit, I should be really, really proud of myself. I think when you speak things, it just feels more real. And so this is an amazing opportunity for you to celebrate yourself as well and to be proud of yourself as well. So the vibes are immaculate. <laughs> the conversation is very constructive. Um, supportive, celebratory, like admiring and praising each other and hyping each other up and just getting excited for your futures. Um, now, I was starting to get this feeling even with just these cards and then the Five of Cups came out, which I think really um, confirmed this message. Um, one of you, and I, I feel like it might be, it might be the other person they're going to share some news with you about a new opportunity that has been offered to them. It's likely a job offer or like, you know, something of their own, like their own venture, their own project, their own business. The Ace of Pentacles is about like new career opportunities, um, new jobs, new sources of income. So they're going to tell you some news of like, oh, by the way, I got this job offer, or oh, by the way, I'm starting this new venture. Um, and I think that, because the Three of Wands is also about travel, I think that they might like announce to you that they're gonna be moving somewhere, that they're gonna be moving somewhere for work, or like they accepted this job offer that that causes them to go far away, or like, if this is already a long distance thing, um, it could be that like they accepted, like if you're in country A and they're in country B, it could be like they accepted a job in country B and so they're gonna be staying there. But I feel like they would share with you this news that like they got this offer or they're starting this new um, venture that would put them at a physical distance from you. Cause the three of wands is like traveling, going away, it feels far away. So I was kind of getting that vibe when I saw these together. And then the Five of Cups came out, which is about like some kind of, some kind of sad news or some kind of disappointing news. Um, yeah, I feel like there's not much to dig really, really deep with this Five of Cups. It's just, 
it's like a bummer, you know? That's what the Five of Cups feels like. It's not the end of the world, but it's just a bummer. That's really what the Five of Cups feels like. Um, and it's also a card where maybe we could tend to focus on the negative. Ah, you know what? Because you guys have had such a positive time with this person up until now. Um, you've rekindled your relationship, um, which is amazing. And you've also had this really important moment of realizing how far you've come in your life because you got to, you know, talk about it and share it with this person um, and feeling really proud of yourself and feeling really accomplished and feeling how much you've grown. And then you hear this news from this person and I feel like for a moment your mood just goes like clunk. Like it just, <laughs> like it just falls down and I feel like you're watching your emotions go through this shift and you might feel a little bit silly you know what I mean like we were just talking about all this positive stuff and and my mood changed so quickly over this thing that you know really I should be happy for them um because the five of cups is about like focusing on the negative even though there's so many um even though there's so many positive things and I don't know, it's like you guys might feel silly or you might feel guilty because it's like I've just had so many positive revelations about myself and my own life and now I can't let go of this one thing that they just said. And like even as the conversation keeps going, you might feel like you can't be fully present because you're just holding on to that one thing. Like they said they're going away, they said they're going away or like they said they're staying where they are if it's a long distance thing. And like you can't, forget about that to the point where maybe you feel like you can't be as present during this meeting. And I guess I want to tell you guys that you shouldn't feel any kind of way about that. You shouldn't feel silly about that or you shouldn't feel guilty about that. Because like, yeah, it is a bummer. And again, this goes with like accepting your feelings as they come and validating your feelings as they come. But I do also want to reiterate to you guys that it's not the end of the world because the Five of Cups is never the end of the world. Um, the Five of Cups means like, and even in this card, usually, usually three cups have spilled, but in this card, only one leaf like spilled. The, the four other leaves are still holding water, meaning they have not spilled. So it's like a much smaller deal than you think it is. Um, even if this person does take the offer, you're still going to be able to see them a lot, I think. Or they might not even go through with it, you know? It might be something that they just mention and then they're like, oh yeah, I didn't go for it. And it was like, whatever, I got a better offer. Or like, meh, you know? And I think it's a lot less big of a thing to them than you might make it up to be. Because I think you're so scared of like, what does it mean? Am I not gonna see them again? And it's like not gonna be that big of an issue is kind of the way I'm interpreting this Five of Cups. Um, but with the King of Cups as the bottom of the deck energy, I feel like this is you guys trying to be, because you know, the King of Cups is very like emotionally mature and very accepting. And so I feel like you guys are putting pressure on yourself to be this, this King of Cups in that moment or like, you know, trying to act happy for this person and supportive when really you're like, ah, that's such a bummer. Um, and I think you guys don't need to put that much pressure on yourselves because the truth is that you have made a lot of progress emotionally and you have healed a lot. And look, I think that's the figs that I was talking about before. I think those are figs. Don't they look like figs? Yeah. <laughs> um, and there's water energy again with the King of Cups which we had here, Cancer, Scorpio, Pisces energy. We also have Gemini energy, like I said, the lovers. And I even mentioned my cat earlier, who's a Gemini. <laughs> um, and then we had Sagittarius too. Um, but yeah, I think that you guys have both become a lot more emotionally mature and a lot more in touch with your emotions. And I think that now that you've rekindled this connection and you've connected as your new versions of yourself, um, I don't see a lot. I don't see a lot that would hinder this connection. And I hope that, you know, after this meeting is all said and done, like you could look back on it 
happily and remember the positives of it remember you know how nice it was to see this person again and what a beautiful place you went to and how proud you are of them and how freaking proud you are of yourself um for everything that you've achieved and that you know you you're still going to keep in touch you're still going to see each other and, and everything's going to be okay i feel like for some of you this five of cups is not even going to go through like <laughs> like the the news that you heard that it's like you're happy for them but at the same time it's disappointing because you're wondering if you're going to see them as much or see them again for some of you the thing might not even happen anyway and they won't even really care they'll be like oh yeah i decided to do something else or like oh yeah it fell through but it's fine like i'm getting that feeling for some of you it's going to fall through anyway or like it's not going to put as much distance between you as you think um i really don't feel that like scared about this five of cups because this king of cups is as the bottom of the deck energy it's like the overarching energy which means that you guys have grown a lot and you're ready for something deeper emotionally and you're ready for the real thing and when you're ready for the real thing like you're you're willing to put in any effort that that entails you know so I feel really optimistic and I feel really excited for you guys um, but this is everything that I'm seeing for this part of the reading so just to recap in the extended part of the reading um, we're gonna see when this meeting is gonna happen see if we can get specific uh, time frames and then we are going to see how this person is feeling after the meeting how they're feeling about you and how they're feeling about the connection and then what is this meeting gonna lead to any changes any new developments in the connection and when those are gonna happen so yes i'm gonna leave the youtube reading here thank you very very much oh and yeah the link will be down below i don't know if i said that but just just so you guys know but you probably already knew that but <laughs> anyway thank you very very much for letting me do this reading for you i hope you have a wonderful day or night whenever you're watching and i wish you all the best please take good care of yourself stay healthy don't forget to like comment and subscribe if you feel like doing that I also have a Patreon, so if you guys are interested in seeing even more exclusive pick a cards where you get to choose the topic, that will be linked down below too. And I have a music channel. The song that you guys heard at the very start of this video was an original song. So if you're interested in listening to that or any of my other songs, the music channel will be linked down below for you as well. Group number one, I'm sending so much love to you, to your person and to your spiritual teams. I thank you very much for being here and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye. Hi, number twos. So if you guys chose the Iolite and the Blissful Dolphin Tarot, first of all, good choice. She's freaking adorable. Um, this is going to be a reading all about the next time you see the person you are thinking about. So um, if you guys want to know like exactly what is being covered in this reading, I did touch on it a little bit in the intro of this video. I sort of went through like an itemized list of what we'll be looking at in this reading. Um, but basically the gist of it is that in this reading, we're going to look at the current energies between you and the person you're thinking of. And then we're going to look at everything leading up to your next meeting and then what is going to be happening during that meeting, of course. Um, so that's what we're going to look at here. And then there is going to be an extended reading today. In that reading, we're going to see um, when your next meeting is happening and how this person is going to feel about you and about the situation after you have met the next time and if that meeting is going to lead to anything. Is it going to lead to a new development? Is it going to lead to a change in your connection? And if so, when would that be happening? So that's basically the general breakdown we're going to start by looking at a bunch of oracle cards and then we're going to look at a bunch of tarot cards and yeah that's the way we're going to do it today or that's kind of the way we always do it okay group number two so your first card is density then we have stimulation with chili And then we have talents on the right path and guidance, wisdom, learning, new information. Then we have air with imagination.
lionfish with individuality. And then finally, we have staying alive. Okay, so the first thing I want to look at is any zodiac signs that are jumping out because these could be confirmations for you guys if you or the person you're thinking about has these. Um, so with chili, obviously we have the element of fire so that is aries leo and sagittarius and on the chili card you know not only do we have the element of fire we also have this little aries symbol here um so aries is especially being um emphasized here and then of course we have air which could be referring to air signs those being gemini libra and aquarius and then i've also been looking at the numbers on these cards so actually interestingly on the lionfish you know lion could be referring to leo again and then we have the number 14 on this card which is um related to the temperance card in tarot which is related to sagittarius so there's like fire confirmed here and then there's an extra aries an extra leo and an extra sagittarius so i feel like fire signs is like really important to this group um and then of course air signs as well gemini libra aquarius and then um the number 18 it could also be talking about pisces because 18 is the number that is related to the moon card so if you or your person fall under these signs um you can definitely take that as a confirmation um but no worries if you're not under these signs it's it's just for yeah it's just for extra confirmation so with that let's get into the meaning of the cards now i'm gonna start over here and then we'll just move through them this way and the first one that we have is density it's funny i just got this oracle deck recently and you know there's a lot of cards in it uh this is the second video that i'm using it for and the second time that density has come out. So I'm like, oh, hey, I know you. <laughs> I'm familiar with you. And the message that density was giving me last time, um, the message like quality over quantity was coming to me pretty strongly. So you guys or this person that you're thinking about, you might be, first of all, you guys might be in a process where you're like trying to simplify your life and trying to really pick out what is best for you and what you really, really want and to commit your energy to that. So not letting like your energy go out to other places that are distracting you or draining you or wasting your time. It's like, this is, I almost said like this year. So maybe this is like a resolution, but like this year we're not settling. We're gonna focus on what's best for us. Um, you know, make our life really simple, really narrow down what it is that we wanna commit to and go for that. Um, but it's also making me think that you or this person could be the type who has a pretty small social circle but the connections you do have mean a lot to you like this would be the type of person who has like a couple really really best friends rather than like a bunch of acquaintances because that's just how they're more comfortable like it's not a lot of people i trust it's not a lot of people i feel get me um that's the kind of vibe that i'm getting from you or them or both of you um and there was something else that I was going to say, and then I got a little bit spacey. Oh, I was going to say I'm getting like a very fiercely loyal vibe, again, from you or this person. Um, it's like I'm not loyal to a lot of people, but when I am loyal to you, I'm loyal to the death. Or like, you know, I don't trust a lot of people. I don't open up to a lot of people, but when I do, like... I open the hell up. It's like I'm very selective with who I let in to my circle and then I'm very, very fiercely loyal and I'm very committed. And I would kind of say it's an intense energy, honestly. Um, you know, chili peppers are pretty intense as well. Um, but this is the kind of vibe that I'm getting from you guys. Um, density can mean so many things though. I'm also thinking of like there's something about the energy of this connection or just the way things are right now that could be weighing heavy on you that could be weighing you down so you guys might feel a little bit dissatisfied or a lot dissatisfied with the way the pieces have fallen in this connection right now or like your dynamic between this person maybe you you know you feel you want to be a lot closer to them or in a lot more communication with them or a lot more open with them than you actually are maybe there's some things that are kind of weighing on your mind that you've been wanting to get off your chest especially because you know air yes imagination but it can also talk about communication maybe you feel like you really need to hash things out with this person or there's just like a lot that you want to say to them that's been like that's been weighing you down and also density makes me think of something that 
you know, because if something's dense, it can be so tiny, but but have hold such a weight. So it's like something so small has had such a big impact on you. So some of you who chose this group, this might be someone that you don't know that well yet, or like you've had limited interactions with them, and yet the impact that they've had on you is so massive, is so massive. And I feel like that might be kind of a foreign feeling to you guys, especially considering um, what just came through earlier about like, it takes a lot for me to, you know, open up to someone. It takes a lot for me to like, take someone as my own and care for them really deeply. And then here comes this person just walking in and like, you know, you've just had a few interactions with them and you already feel so, so, so strongly. And because it's such a contrast from what you might normally experience, it really hits you like a truck. Like, whoa, this is someone special. Um, that could also be how they felt about you as well, because as I, you know, go through this reading, I really often feel like saying, oh, you or them or both of you. So honestly, it's probably just both of you. <laughs> so let's, um, let's stop with that. I feel like this is a mutual thing. Um, and if you have known this person for quite some time, I definitely do think that this was the vibe when you first met. Like you had a huge impact on each other from the time that you first met. Um, some of you guys maybe haven't even met this person yet and you just like feel their energy or like know of their energy and it, it weighs on you really, really hard. Like it has a really, really powerful impact on you. Even like stimulation and the intense heat of chili peppers is making me think of that and i'm thinking of um you know capsaicin i think is how you pronounce it it's the active ingredient in chili peppers that makes them spicy i think it's called capsaicin and it's said that like if you drink water it makes the spice even worse like a lot of us try to drink water to make spice go away and then it just gets worse because the water actually helps the capsaicin travel around your mouth um I hope I'm explaining that accurately, but I'm thinking like, uh, you know, trying to downplay your feelings for this person or forget about them or move on from them, it could have an adverse effect. Or like, if you try to ignore their energy, like signs of their energy will just pop up even more. It's kind of the feeling that I'm getting. Like the more you would try to suppress it, the bigger it's gonna get. Um, and water actually, like we're talking about drinking water, water can be a representation of your emotions. So this could be a person where like, as, as soon as something gets you in your feelings, you think of them. Like we have, I think this is a guitar. It, if you hear a song that's like emotional or moving in any way, you would just like think of this person or like anytime they're emotionally moved or getting emotional, they would just think of you and it just, your emotions get blown up when you're around each other. Um, it's kind of the feeling that I'm getting. Um, you might just, you guys might just find that you get very intensely emotional around each other. Um, like the word triggering is coming to my mind. It doesn't even have to be, I know triggering has a negative connotation, but I just think you actually, doesn't always, but anyway, um, I think you trigger very, very strong and intense emotions in each other in a way that like not many other people can do. And so, like, for example, just for an example, maybe like you were never much of a crier, but then ever since you met this person, you can't stop crying or something like that. Or you have a very, very long temper. You're very, very patient, but something about this person just like, <clears throat> like they just get under your nerves in a way that other people don't, or you were never very excitable or maybe like you never felt very sexual and then <clears throat> sorry i'm not coughing to make it awkward i actually just like have a cough but that was some that was some interesting timing <laughs> and i guess chili peppers could give you that reaction as well but like it's just i feel like you guys awaken some intense emotions in each other that aren't that aren't normally present we do have feathers on this card so Feathers could be a sign that this person is thinking of you or that their higher self is around you, um, that their energy is present or just a confirmation of your connection. Um, but I also wanna talk a little bit about these cards together, like stimulation, talents, and guidance, because this could be someone who has really, really inspired you. You might really admire this person for their talents, whether those be um, artistic, whether those be professional, whether those be um, social. I was kind of getting the vibe earlier. I think this person is very, very charming. 
like they just I don't know they can like charm your pants off <laughs> so that might be something you really admire about them but I would guess that you guys look up to this person and they might be a source of guidance for you whether that's like they have directly given you advice or just it's like an honor to watch them live their life and you might see them as something of like a role model an example an inspiration um and so i think that stimulation is kind of talking about that as well like activating some sort of passion within you activating some sort of inspiration within you um you could feel very spiritually connected to this person with the number 18 here like i was talking about a bit before um this is the number that's associated with the moon um, and 18 also makes me think of like new ventures, new career paths, um, creating new abundance in your life. So this could be someone who really inspired you to move towards a certain goal, to pursue a certain talent, or just to live your best life. It's like when you watch this person, you're like, I want to live my best life. I want to reach goals. They kind of get your fire burning like that so to speak and i think that as souls the two of you could share very similar talents so like if this person is musically gifted then you are likely musically gifted as well if this person is honestly if this person is very very charming and you admire that about them you're probably very very charming as well and i think that you could help each other like uncover talents that you didn't know you had or that you just haven't really like polished yet and that kind of might be a part of your soul's plan together is like talents that you've been suppressing or that you've denied within yourself like oh i don't have that talent i'm not good at that or like that you just haven't noticed yet you could be really like noticing those in each other and pulling them out of each other um but i feel like you inspire each other a lot i think you intellectually stimulate each other a lot and you know a lot of this energy goes both ways so this wisdom this learning this new information i think that you and this person have either taught each other a lot or you have the potential to teach each other a lot. Um, and you could have amazing conversations. Either you already have had amazing conversations with this person or this is something in your future. Like when you get closer to this person, you could talk to them for hours and hours and hours because you can learn so much from each other with this new information, like just hearing about each other's experiences, about each other's perspectives, it just blows your world wide open. It makes your world so much bigger. Um, and I think both of you are very intelligent and you really like that intellectual challenge and stimulation. Um, and you could just talk for ages, like not a cell phone in sight, it's just, just exchanging ideas. Um, and I can see like, you would have this conversation and just, you know, I'm thinking of something being blown in the wind, like see where it takes you. And then you're like, wait, how do we start talking about this? And then we got from here to here to here to here. Like, and now we're, now we're talking about hedgehogs. Like it just, the way your minds bounce off each other and where it takes you of all these different fun tangents. And like, I feel like nothing is off limits either. You could, yeah, like you could talk about things that um, are like controversial or that would get people heated um, but you can just be honest with each other and you can just be no filter and no bullshit with each other and this kind of intellectual compatibility or like conversational compatibility I think that's really really special as somebody who's had a lot of awkward conversations and maybe I'm just awkward and that's why um, it's really, really special, not only when you can flow that well with someone, but when you come out of a long conversation like that and you don't feel tired, you actually feel more energized. That's really, really special. And I think that's what you do have or what you can have with this person. That's really beautiful. Um, you know, we also spoke about this air card possibly indicating that you guys need to get some things off your chest with each other. There's some things that you need to express um with this little witch here um you guys could be manifesting each other maybe you guys have done some sort of spells or witchcraft this is like a, a witch's deck that's why the witch is here but um i did want to mention that like maybe you guys have been doing some spells or witchcraft or something like that um but also with imagination there could be a concern mm, okay there's more meanings to density so i'm gonna go back to it there could be sometimes a concern like I do think you guys feel very 
we spoke about you feel very intensely for this person, you feel probably a spiritual connection to this person. There might be some times where you feel like your, you know, your imagination is running away with you or that maybe the the synchronicities, maybe the, you know, intensity that you're feeling is in your imagination or something like that. And I'm thinking of air. It's like it's wispy. You can't grab it. Um, something about this connection to you, I think, feels like unattainable or like so close but so far away, always just kind of out of your reach. Um, I'm hearing like delusional. Not that you are delusional, but maybe you've like wondered about that at some point in this connection. Um, I'm seeing the sparkles on this card and thinking about like all that glitters. Um, you might think it's too good to be true sometimes as well. Um, and with density here, another thing it's making me think of is like the density of this dimension, <laughs> the density of this third dimension. Um, I think you guys are very, very close together in the 5D, but this dimension is very dense and there's illusions of separation. There's illusions of being... Did I just say illusions of separation? I'm spacing out. <laughs> there's illusions of being separated from each other. There's illusions of fear. There's illusions of ego. Um, you do have a 5D connection with this person and I think that connection is easy and breezy and lovely. And I think that the earth connection could sometimes be difficult. And I think it's frustrating because it's like you get along so well together, but at the same time, there could be some fears that get in the way sometimes, or like pride could get in the way sometimes with this lion, leo -y energy and individuality. Um, because with this chili pepper, you know, that's irritant, right? And I feel like there's some things where you guys just rub each other the wrong way. I think that when you're in the flow and you're having your stimulating conversations and you're having your heart to hearts, that's when you're speaking from soul to soul. And then when you start rubbing each other the wrong way or like butting heads or not seeing eye to eye, that's when your egos are getting in the way or that's when the density of the 3D experience is getting in the way. When you guys are in the flow together, when you're conversing, when you're sharing ideas, when you're expressing your talents, it's like you slip into the 5D for a moment and all of your like 3D baggage just falls away for that time and that's when you can really experience the true beauty of your soul connection um, but then when you fall back to the illusions of separation and my physical body and your physical body being two separate things and our, our egos come into play I feel like you guys could trigger each other a little bit sometimes you could rub each other the wrong way a little bit sometimes um, also with density this is making me think that somebody could be playing dumb in this connection um, I don't know how to further elaborate on that, but like someone's playing dumb, like there's clearly something there. Could be you, like <laughs> you're playing dumb, like, oh, it's just in my head, it's just in my imagination. Um, but I sort of got the vibe of like someone playing dumb, like, you know, you, come on, you know what you were doing when you said that to me. You knew how I was gonna interpret that or like, and like, oh no, I didn't, I didn't know that. Uh, or like, you know, we had a moment there. You know that there was something there. You know that I was feeling this way. Oh, I wasn't aware. Like someone's playing dumb when they know what they're doing is basically what I want to say. Or like, they know what the vibe is. They know what the emotions are and they're acting like they don't. Yeah. Cause dense is like, you know, when someone's dense, it's like they're dumb. So playing dumb. Yeah, is <laughs> how I got that. Um, we spoke about the lionfish a little bit. I think that's talking about like, I think that's talking about pride. Somebody might be, somebody might be really resisting like commitment or really resisting vulnerability here out of pride. Um, I'm just thinking of like Sagittarius energy as well because we have the number 14 here. Um, there's like someone who maybe, I'm, I'm thinking of like King of Wands energy. Someone gets pride out of being like, I don't need anyone or like, I don't need commitments or I don't need stability. Like they get a weird pride out of that. And it's like, I feel like it's not entirely the case uh, because I, I think, well, I can't speak for all humans, but I think most of us need some level of like, <laughs> stability and some level of connection and some level of consistent companionship. I feel like someone might get in this weird like proud mood where they're like, I'm just a free spirit. I'm just a, 
what do you call it? I'm just a wild soul, or I don't know what the word is that I'm trying to think of. Um, but they kind of try to play their persona like that when really they just want like, they just want like cinnamon buns baking in the oven and snuggle on the couch <laughs> and you know, have a, a long term partner. Um, anyway, with staying alive, interesting. We haven't, I haven't really thought about how this plays into everything. Um, there is a song called Staying Alive that might be relevant to you, but you know, if someone says like, I'm staying alive, that doesn't sound very awesome if I'm being honest. Um, if you haven't heard from this person in a while, if you're like limited to no contact and you're wondering how they're doing, I feel like they're just okay. You know, like, eh, I'm, I'm alive. <laughs> I'm making it, I'm doing okay. Um, and their higher self right now is saying like, I don't want you to pity me. I don't want you to feel bad for me. Like I'm not, I'm not doing badly, I'm just kind of coasting. I'm not doing badly, I'm just kind of coasting. And the, mm, I feel like this person's higher self is calling them out a little bit. They're like, I'm choosing to be in this energy. Cause I feel like your, your person's energy right now, I'm gonna call them your person. They're kind of just like, they're doing okay. They're not doing great, but they're just like, they're just like surviving. And their higher self is saying something like they're getting in their own way or like they're choosing to live this kind of life. They're, they're accepting this level of emotional fulfillment, um, which I do feel for them because I really relate to thinking like this is as good as I can feel and I'm not even going to bother trying to feel better because I'm just going to be disappointed. I really relate to that energy. Um, but I think their higher self might be trying to give them a little bit of a push like come on, we can, we can do this. We can, we can raise our bar. We can, we can find more fulfillment. So I would say maybe they're in a little bit of a funk right now and that's okay. Again, like their higher self and even their 3D self wouldn't want you to feel bad for them or anything like that. Cause everybody goes through funks and funks are temporary, but I think that's just kind of the energy that they're in right now. And memories of you or thoughts of you might kind of not help them stay alive, but well, maybe, but you know, give them that little spark they need every now and then, give them a little stimulation they need every now and then. Um, maybe you guys, I don't know what kind of connection this is, but maybe you guys have some like spicy memories together, you know, steamy memories together that <laughs> this person thinks about. Um, but yeah, I think that that's everything I am seeing for like reading about your connection. So now we're gonna get into the next meeting of yours. I'm gonna drink some water. Okay, and now we finally get to use our dolphins. I'm not gonna lie, I purely bought this deck because it was cute. <laughs> um, so I don't know how like symbolic it's gonna be, but I think you can find symbolism in any image, honestly. She shuffles pretty nicely. And if you guys like this deck, this is not sponsored by the way, I just really like these decks. I would also check out the Gummy Bear Tarot because it has the same vibe of like cuteness and funniness in my opinion. Okay, I'm gonna shuffle it one more time. Okay. So, the first thing that we're gonna see here is like, who is going to initiate this next meeting? Is it gonna be you? Is it gonna be them? Is it gonna be neither of you? AKA spirit is making you bump into each other. Who is initiating the next meeting? We have the six of swords. I'm going to need a clarifier. Is it gonna be you? Is it gonna be group number two? Um, if one of you is an air sign, this could be saying like the air sign out of you, but is it going to be you? We have the 10 of pentacles. Mm. 
it's interesting. We have we have the same colored dolphins in both of these. <laughs> we have a blue dolphin, a green dolphin, and a pink dolphin. I'm thinking of you and your person as the green and pink dolphin, and I'll tell you why. It's because <laughs> these are the colors of the heart chakra. The green represents the masculine aspect of the heart, and pink represents the feminine aspect of the heart. And honestly, I am kind of getting counterparty vibes, or you're just in in a contract where you're acting as counterparts to each other right now. Um, but I feel like there's one who's more in their masculine energy and one who's more in their feminine energy. It's interesting <laughs> the way these come out because this blue dolphin in this card literally looks like they're picking up the pink and green dolphin, boop, putting them together and then walking away. It's like, um, and I could swear there's been something like this in a rom-com where like, or it's like in The Parent Trap where like <laughs> Annie and Hallie make this plan to bring the parents back together. Um, this could be spirit or if you guys have a mutual, if you have any mutual friends with this person, um, there might be a mutual friend or acquaintance who's gonna like, poop, like bring the two of you together um, because it's actually not looking like you know, you're initiating to them or they're initiating to you. It looks like this blue dolphin is like, boop, and then walking away. And I don't know, I got kind of like a mischievous vibe from it. Like the blue dolphin is like, let's say the blue dolphin is a mutual friend. They're like, hey, group two, like, you want to come have dinner with me? Hey, group two's person, you want to come have dinner with me? And then like you guys both show up and blue dolphins like, oh shit, look at the time. I forgot, I have to go walk my dog, I, bye. And then just like leaves the two of you alone. <laughs> That's like, I'm kind of getting like a playful or mischievous vibe from it. Um, so yeah, if there is a mutual person in your life, um, they could be kind of orchestrating something like this, like, or you're both getting invited to the same event and you like didn't know that the other person was going to be there um of course if you guys don't have any mutual humans in your life this can also be um spirit and this is just letting me you know like yeah spirit's going to make the two of you bump into each other it's going to put the two of you in the same place at the same time um it looks like the dolphins are blushing so i feel like yeah it's kind of awkward like you weren't you weren't expecting to see them that day. You didn't know they were going to be there. Um, but I only think it's going to be awkward for like two seconds <laughs> because once you get to talking, you know, we already know the type of conversations that you guys have. You get really into the flow. That's when you can really connect in the 5D. Like when you're connecting, um, oh my God, I almost said when you're connecting orally, <laughs> which I mean, that is accurate. <laughs> what, you know, speaking, oral, but anyway, um, when you're connecting vocally, verbally, um, intellectually, I feel like that's when you really slip into your, like, into your 5D connection. I am specifically tasting whiskey right now, so this could be, like, a party. I'm not drinking whiskey, by the way. <laughs> this could be, um, like, a party where alcohol is involved if you guys drink if not ignore me or other people there could be drinking um but yeah it's gonna be awkward for like two seconds but once you get into your conversation um you just slip into this other world like we've previously seen and the six of swords is a card that makes me think of heart to hearts and it's a card that talks about smooth communication it talks about a stressful or turbulent situation moving into a more peaceful one so if you do feel any dissatisfactions anything like you need to get off of your chest with this person um, you're definitely going to be able to talk it through with them and I really really like that we have the ten of pentacles here because this is telling me that like any foundation that you've previously built with this person um, like a certain level of closeness a certain level of trust a certain level of comfortability, a certain level of loyalty, like whatever you'd previously built with this person is still there because the 10 of pentacles is like a solid and consistent foundation that won't go away. Um, so for those of you who've already previously been involved with this person, I feel like you're just picking up right from where you left off. You're getting right back into that beautiful energy with each other. Um, and your foundation is definitely still there. Um, 
for those of you like who this is someone new, I do think that you'll be building up this foundation with them. Like this is you guys having a heart to heart and really building trust with each other and really feeling comfort with each other. So like you're establishing this dynamic where you feel safe together or like um, if this is an older connection, you're like, oh yeah, I still feel really safe with you. I still feel really, really comfortable with you. Um, the Ten of Pentacles really does make me think of loyalty um, and family, not in a weird way, but like, <laughs> or maybe this is your family, honestly. Like, I tend to assume that, that most readings are romantic, but this could be a family member. Um, but you know, when someone is like family to you, you look out for them, you're loyal to them, you protect them, you have their back. And I feel like this is the kind of, um, the kind of bond that you guys would have together. Like you, you take each other into your inner circles, which I think is really, really special, especially like, um, given the energy we saw before where that's not like super common for you guys. It's like really few number of people that you truly care about that deeply and that you would like fight, fight to the death for That's very dramatic, but like, <laughs> um, you know, that you'll, do anything to like nurture them, support them, protect them. That's the kind of foundation that you're building. Um, and again, there was something that I wanted to say. Oh yeah, in terms of loyalty, like if this is a romantic connection, I feel like even if it's been some time since you guys have seen each other and even if you're not official, it's like you guys have been loyal to each other. Um, in terms of like talking to other people or like because I'm thinking swords represents like talking, pentacles represents physical things, so like loyal physically. Um, I feel like you've been loyal to each other or like this person has been loyal to you, this person hasn't like formed any other romantic connections or like been with anyone else in that way um, was kind of the vibe that I'm picking up. It's so interesting, like in the previous group, I had to pull so many cards just to get this amount of information, but like in this group and it makes sense because you guys like once you get into talking the words just like flow and flow and flow together so it makes sense that like your reading would have this energy too but like i only had to pull two cards and i already figured out like how you guys are gonna how this next meeting is gonna happen so rather than one of you initiating it's like you just end up in the same place together um for some reason i'm getting like a party vibe um but I feel like there would be other people present, at least at the beginning, like you guys could totally go off on your own, which you probably will, <laughs> which you probably will. Honestly, I could see you guys being like, eh, screw everybody else here with all due respect. But like, <laughs> I'm not like, I'm not interested in this vibe. I'm not really interested in what's going on. So let's just like go off and talk together. Let's go for a walk or like, let's go into this room or let's just ignore what's going on around us. Um, yeah, I feel like it's some kind of event or environment with other people present um, and you'll just go off and kind of do your own thing and and talk and, you know, talk things through. So let's see more about what you guys are going to talk about and how this person is going to feel. What are you guys going to talk about? Okay, so we have again two cards coming out together. We have the Page of Wands and we have the Four of Cups. Hmm. And then, how is this person going to feel when you're together? Two of Pentacles and Five of Cups. And then at the bottom of the deck, yeah, I'm not surprised. At the bottom of the deck, we have the Eight of Wands. I'm feeling very thirsty in this group. <laughs> um, okay. Yeah. It's no surprise to me that the Eight of Wands is at the bottom of the deck because <clears throat> the deck, because this is a card 
that makes me think of a lot of communication coming in, um, communication coming in very, very fast. I feel like your conversations will go across all different topics as I think they normally do. But just know that if there's any specific topics that you want to touch on with this person or like any specific things that need to be addressed with them, that you will end up on those topics. I was going to say at some point in the night, so I guess I guess this is happening at night. Ah, okay. I'm starting to I'm starting to understand this a little bit. Um Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, you're going to be basically talking to this person all night about like a million different things. Um because it's not awkward with them. So like you could go from having a very sappy emotional exchange to like making stupid jokes to like having a serious talk about your future plans and then like talk about the freaking weather. Like you can kind of go all over the place. You could talk about multiple things at once because um, that's just the way your brains work, I want to say. And that's just the way you are when you're together. So there's going to be a lot, a lot, a lot of conversation happening. Um, if you guys have been trying to manifest this person or if that's what you're trying to do right now, um, I would suggest like writing down a few very, very specific things, like very, very specific words um, and see that they will come up in the conversation just as like confirmation that your manifestation powers work. So like um, you write, I don't know, you like write down the word kerfuffle, um, courgette and uh, blepharoplasty or <laughs> some like weird words and then you will notice while you're talking to this person, like they will say those very specific words or like they will make those very specific references. Um, obviously you don't have to do this, but the eight of wands is also a card that makes me think of manifestation. And I thought that there might be some witches in this group, some people who've been practicing witchcraft, which is just like setting intentions to be manifested in your life. Um, but if you put very, very specific signs down for spirit to fulfill, you'll see that like throughout this night with this person, you will get all of those signs. Or like, I don't know, maybe you, you wrote down like Batman and then somebody at this place has a Batman shirt, you know, or, you know, something like that. I think you guys get what I mean, but very, very specific signs and synchronicities could be, um, could be confirmed to you. Um, also, I feel like there's a lot of catching up going on. So if you guys have felt dissatisfied with the way things have been in this connection, like you've wanted more progress, you've wanted more closeness. I feel like you are making a lot of progress during this meeting and you're like catching up to where you want to be. Not that you were ever behind schedule because you're always exactly where you need to be. But like if you had this idea in your mind, like I wish we were at this level of closeness in our connection. I feel like you're catching up to that very, very quickly from this next meeting and from the things that you're talking about. So this is a really, really nice um, overarching energy to have. And I like in the Eight of Wands that like all the wands are raining down straight because it means like you're being honest with each other. You're being straightforward with each other. And this dolphin is like, yay. <laughs> okay, so um, <laughs> what you guys are gonna talk about we have the Page of Wands here and we have the Four of Cups. Um, I, I am really getting the vibe that for most of you, this is something romantic because the Page of Wands is making me think that there is some kind of like flirting going on. Like this person is flirting with you a lot or you're flirting with each other a lot or there's a lot of like playful banter. Um, it could also be that you're just exchanging a lot of jokes. Um, or you're talking a lot about the things that inspire you. And I think one thing that this Four of Cups is talking about is that once you get into that flirting or joking around with this person, that's when you realize how much you miss them. Like maybe you, you touch on a specific inside joke that you have and you're like, oh, I miss joking like this. It was really nice to just like talk like this with you and, and fool around like this with you. But you're definitely being playful with each other. I feel like that's the overall vibe. Um, there could be some comments made about how, oh, this isn't really my vibe or like this event is kind of boring or this environment is kind of boring or you could be complaining <laughs> a little bit. Um, even if this is like 
you're coming together in someone's workplace or like a work environment you could be like, oh, this is so boring, <laughs> something like that. I feel like there's a little bit of like playful complaining going on as well. Um, and also like with this staying alive and the four of cups, I feel like someone's kind of like downplaying their life to make it seem more boring. I don't know why. Maybe so the other person doesn't get jealous. I don't know. I just put that because like I, I'm not saying that's the case, but I don't know. Like let's say one of you has become really, really successful and like really, really abundant, really rich <laughs> since you last saw each other. Then one of you could be like, hey, like I, I saw you, I feel like your career is going really well or like I hear you're doing X, Y, Z now. Like you must be bawling. Oh, you know, it's it's all right. Like I'm doing pretty good. I feel like someone's kind of downplaying like that like oh yeah i'm doing pretty good or like um like oh have you been to any other like cool parties have you been hanging out with blah blah, blah? have you been talking to anyone eh, not really there's like that kind of vibe going on where you or the other person or both of you are like downplaying your accomplishments or like downplaying the adventures that you've been up to the shenanigans that you've been up to or something like that like oh i've just I've just been like hanging out with my cat, you know, that kind of thing. <laughs> um, which I don't know, it could be for many reasons. Maybe you don't want to make the other person feel FOMO. Maybe you don't want to come off like you're bragging. Um, maybe, you, yeah, you don't want to make them jealous for whatever reason, but like there is a little bit of that um, going on. And I do think that you guys will talk about like, oh, we should hang out again and sort of talk about things that you might want to do together places that you might want to go. Um, I think you're going to feel, it makes sense that the two of pentacles is here. And I really like that in this card, the two pentacles are on the same level. Cause sometimes we see like the person's juggling the pentacles and it's like, ah, I can't find the balance, but you guys are already in really, really good balance with each other. So, you know, the energy is flowing between you guys immaculately. And I think, you know, this is how the person is feeling about you. I think they're really, really going to appreciate that. But one thing that I felt with the um, with the Five of Cups, and maybe this is kind of specific, but I got the message of like, you know, you guys were really vibing well, and this person like thought that you were on the same page, and it's like this person thought that maybe you were gonna go home with them, but then you just went home by yourself, <laughs> and then they're like disappointed. Because Five of Cups is about like minor disappointments. Um, it could be the other way around too. Like maybe you thought you were going to go home with them, but then they were like, oh, I have an early, I have an early morning. I'm thinking of like the, the Camila Cabello song. That's like the whole premise of the song is like, and I think it's actually about, is it about Shawn Mendes? I think so. But like, you know, before they were together, they would always like bump into each other at parties and she would think like, oh my God, tonight is the night. Tonight's the night we're gonna have our, you know, steamy night. <laughs> and then and then he would be like, oh, like I have a flight tomorrow or like I have a show tomorrow, I gotta go home. And there was like kind of chasing back and forth like that. And then I think sometimes she would do that. So I feel like the night could end with something like that. You know, like you're vibing really, really well together, but then like you go home by yourself and they're disappointed or like they go home by themselves and you're disappointed. Um, or something like that. If this is not a romantic connection, it could be like after you guys part ways, um, they're like, oh shit, like there was something else that I wanted to tell you that I forgot. Or like there was something I wanted to give you, but I forgot. Um, Cause the five of cups, it really is like, you know, you can come back and get these cups later. It's really not the end of the world, but you're gonna feel a little bit disappointed, of course, you know? Like there will be other opportunities to do that thing that you wanted to do or to say that thing that you want to say, like it's okay, but but I understand why you could be feeling a little bit um, disappointed, yeah. But yeah, it's very cute energy, it's very playful. That I mean, that's just the vibe of the deck. Um, can you imagine giving like <laughs> a heart-wrenching reading with this deck? <laughs> it's so cute. Um, but yeah, I think that's all the messages for 
this part of the reading. So just to recap, in the extended part of this reading, we're going to see um, when this meeting is going to happen and how your person is going to feel after the fact. So like what will be going through their mind? Are they like analyzing every second of it? What are they doing? Um, and then is this meeting going to lead to any changes in your connection or any new developments? And if so, when is that going to happen? So if you guys are interested in watching that extended portion as well, um, that will be linked down below in the description as well as in the pinned comment. But if you're going to leave here, then I will say thank you very, very much for letting me do this reading for you. I hope you have a wonderful day or night whenever you're watching and I wish you all the best. Please take good care of yourself, stay healthy. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe if you feel like doing that. I also have a Patreon, so if you guys are interested in seeing even more exclusive pick a cards where you get to choose a topic, that will be linked down below too. And I have a music channel. The song that you guys heard at the very start of this video was an original song, so if you guys are interested in listening to the full version of that or any of my other songs, um, the music channel will be linked down below for you as well. Group number two, I'm sending so much love to you to your person and to your spiritual teams. Thank you very much for being here. Um, and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye. Hi, number threes. So if you guys chose the white fly tarot and the tangerine quartz, let me give you another close-up look at her again because she's so beautiful. This is going to be your reading all about what will happen the next time you see the person you are thinking of. Um, the very first thing that I wanted to tell you guys is that I do believe the person you are thinking of is thinking about you a lot. When I was getting ready to film this group, I couldn't get this song out of my head and it's called Think About You by Ariana Grande. Um, it's a really, really beautiful song. If you guys feel called to listen to it, I will put a link down below. Um, basically, the whole gist of the song is like, I'm alone, I'm waiting for you, I can't wait for you to get home, I don't have you here with me, but at least I have the memory of you. It's like that kind of vibe. It is romantic in nature, so you might feel called to listen to it if you are thinking about a romantic connection. Um, and also, if you guys like electronic music, I will leave a, a very, very good remix. <laughs> you can always count on me to have the remixes, but yeah, I feel like I'll share that song with you guys just in case you feel called to it, or maybe you already know it. Um, but yeah, so basically we're just going to pull a bunch of oracle cards and then we're going to pull a bunch of tarot cards. Um, if you guys want to know more like specifically about what exactly we're looking at in this reading, I did do like a full breakdown in the intro. So if you were curious about what specifically is going to be covered, um, feel free to look for that timestamp. I will have it down below. But essentially the spark notes version of the reading is we're going to see the current energy between you and your person. And then we're going to look at everything from the events leading up to your next meeting. And then of course, we're going to see what will happen during your next meeting. Um, and then there is going to be an extended reading today as well. And in that part of the reading, we're going to see when this next meeting will happen and how your person will feel after the fact, what will be going through their head, you know, what sort of impression will you have left on them. And then we're also going to see Will this meeting lead to anything in your connection? Will it lead to some kind of changes, some kind of new developments? And if so, when would those be happening? I just saw 222, by the way, just so you know. Um, but yeah, I also really felt like this person you're thinking of, they think, not only do they think about you a lot, but they think very, very highly of you. Um, and it's this feeling of like, you deserve the best, like nothing, nothing is good enough for you. And not in a way that you're demanding, because I know, I know that was bad wording. You know how I said, oh, nothing is good enough for you. Like, I can't make you happy. It's not like that. I didn't mean it like that. It's like, you know, like nothing is good for my good enough for my baby, like <laughs> that kind of thing. And it, oh my God, I'm just, I should just stop talking because this is bad wording, but like, you're too good. You're too good for most things. You deserve the best, the best, the best. That is the kind of feeling that I wanted to convey. Um, it's Mercury retrograde at the time that I'm filming this, so please excuse my poor wording. Um, it could also be that this person um, 
gets kind of clumsy around you and kind of struggles with their words or it could be something where like oftentimes they mean well but because of their wording it ends up coming across as like offensive like what did you mean by that um or maybe it's just me messing up my words and I'm, <laughs> I'm putting it on your person. But anyway, um, let's get into the oracle cards first. So in this part of the reading, we're going to look at the energy between you and them. So to start off, we have protoplanetary disc. Then we have cauliflower with transition and the number 11. So we have an 11 and we had 222 as well. We have commitment, dedication, loyalty, devotion, and manifestation, magic, believe, faith. We have Yule with rebirth. Hermit crab with gratitude. and finding balance. Okay, so I'm just gonna go through, no, I lied. <laughs> I wanna take a look for zodiac signs first. Um, this is the third time I'm doing this reading and I'm still like forgetting my order. But yes, let's look for zodiac signs. So with this cauliflower, we have the element of earth here. So that could be representing Taurus, Virgo or Capricorn. Um, and actually I was gonna say the hermit crab makes me think of the hermit in tarot which is Virgo, which is also an earth sign. So there's like earth energy going on, um, especially Virgo. And then I also wanna look at the numbers that we have here, which I've been doing throughout the reading. Um, the number 11, it could be associated with strength in tarot or justice, depending on the deck, but that would be Leo or Libra energy. And then the number 12 would be associated with the hanged man, AKA Pisces energy. So those are the zodiac signs that are coming through. Oh, and oh my gosh, we also have cancer here, which I almost didn't see. But um, if you or your person have these placements, that could be a confirmation for you. If not, that is totally fine. That's just there. I do that part just for an extra layer of confirmation for those who may need it. Um, okay, so now let's go through all of these cards in order. Um, this is a new deck that I got the cosmos oracle and it's really really cool but i'm not gonna lie there's a lot of cards in this deck that i find kind of hard to interpret when i'm seeing them for the first time so just in case i have left the guidebook to the side while i've been filming this is actually the first group that i feel like i need to dip into the guidebook um <laughs> let's see what's going on with this protoplanetary disc um here she is where planets themselves are formed. Ooh, this could be something like, um, my best friend and I use this wording. We talk about souls in like batches. <laughs> it could be like you and this person were like baked in the same batch of souls. Like you were created in the same wave of souls. And we like we think of it as like your little cookies on the tray and your souls were made in the same batch. Where planets themselves are formed. Although all the nebulous material makes it difficult to achieve clarity in the here and now, something large, concrete, solid, and with endless possibilities is brewing. You are standing in a giant incubator. This is exactly where all planetary systems and physical processes take shape to create a planet. Ooh, I'm getting so excited. So like something new is brewing in your connection which is really cool because this transition card was making me think of like big transformations occurring in your connection too. Um, this is exactly where all planetary systems and physical processes take shape to create a planet. And not just that, all this happens around a star. Not only is there nothing to worry about, but also nothing that you need to do. I love that because I feel like really often, um, you know, reading comments from you guys and reading messages, um, not just when it comes to unions, but when it comes to our manifestations in general, I feel like there's a lot of worry surrounding like, am I doing what needs to be done? Am I doing enough? Am I doing the right things to bring about my manifestation? And when I see this message of there's nothing that you need to do, um, this could literally mean that you can just, you know, sit down, <laughs> sit down and, and let this union come to you. But I also think that this means like, if there's anything you need to do to bring about this union, 
you'll do it naturally. It won't be something that you have to think about doing and not something that you're actively like, I'm doing this to bring about the union. It would just be something that comes so naturally to you. So there's nothing that you need to think about. There's nothing that you need to worry about. Um, this will come together without you even trying or have having to be super conscious about it. If lack of clarity caused by the nebula brings anxiety or confusion, Remember to pay attention to the sky. Sometimes it decides to get the clouds to float across in order to plot certain things together with the sun. On those days, we may only be able to see the clouds at a glance, but we know that the sun can also be found in the meeting. Everything is on its path. Just enjoy the journey. This is a really, really beautiful message for you guys. So some really exciting change in your connection is being formed. We have transition. We even have rebirth here um, with the Yule card. There's like big positive change coming in this connection. It does feel imminent if I'm being honest. Um, but I really liked that last note in the guidebook. It, it can be overwhelming. It can be confusing in here when things are taking shape. Um, but I feel like there's there's no need for you guys at this point to understand why things are happening the way that they are. And I think I spoke about this in a previous group as well, but this is one of those situations where after the fact, when all is said and done, when you've come together, you'll be able to look back and understand why things happen that way with hindsight. But it's not fair to yourself when you're in the moment. Like the universe is weaving this big elaborate plan because it loves you so much and it wants to bring you and this person together and bring you the blessings that you deserve together and the universe is weaving this amazing elaborate plan for you and it's it's not your job to be deciphering everything and figuring everything out that is too big of a task for our little human brains <laughs> the universe has infinitely more knowledge and infinitely more insight and can just is like the amazing master that can move around all the pieces and get us where we want to go. Um, so if you're ever feeling overwhelmed with what is going on with your life, remember that everything is happening for you. Everything is happening for the manifestation of your desires, um, whether that be the union with this person or anything else in your life. And just, I wanna say like, look to your higher self and look to, Look to your desired outcome and know that it's coming and know that everything you see here in front of you is what will lead you to that. So, oh my gosh, yeah. Like with all of these cards, I'm seeing like there's a big transformation coming to you guys in this connection. And I also think that the hermit crab with gratitude, it's like at the end of this journey, you will feel such an overwhelming gratitude for what you've been through. Even the times that were hard, even the times that were confusing. Um, everything is an ingredient to lead to your manifestation, to lead to your union. And I also think it's really, I think the image of the hermit crab is really beautiful because wherever the hermit crab goes, their home is right there. So it's like wherever you go, you're where you're supposed to be. Wherever you go, you're where you're supposed to be. Whatever you need to do, you will naturally do. And you have been. Whatever you need to do, you have been naturally doing, which is amazing. Um, I kind of like these two cards together because it's like, stay committed to your manifestation, stay committed to your vision. I think that maybe sometimes along this journey, maybe things happen that to you, look like you're moving farther away from what you want or look like the situation is unraveling or look like something that's not supposed to be happening is happening. But in those moments, don't be tempted to make your desires smaller. Don't be tempted to give up on your desires or to modify them, to be more accommodating to what is happening. Commit to them and say, I'm still getting what I want. Despite of what might be happening right now, I'm still getting what I want. And I can't see why yet, but what is happening right now is important to bring me what I want. So even if, even if my ego or even if my logical mind feels a dissatisfaction with what's happening, I'm not going to make that lower my standards. I'm not going to take that information and say, oh, I guess my manifestation isn't happening. I guess the universe forgot about me. I guess it's doing something else. We're not going to get tempted into that 
thinking and we're going to stay committed to our desires and stay committed to our manifestation. Also, quite honestly, I think that this is a clear indication like that there is commitment coming in this connection if there isn't already or there is a renewed commitment or a new level of commitment um, definitely coming in this relationship. This is what you guys are manifesting and I really like that the unicorn is here as well. There's a couple different things that I can interpret from this and one is that you guys don't need to change yourself at all to have this union or to have this love in your life. Meaning that you can be your weird self, you can be your imperfect self, you can be your unfiltered self. You are perfect just the way you are. I literally wanna say that like you and this person, and I know that this sounds dramatic, but this is how I feel really, really strongly to say it. You and this person were like designed to love each other and go together exactly as you are. There is nothing that you would have to change about yourself or hide about yourself or downplay or diminish or modify about yourself to be loved and accepted by this person. You can be the magical unicorn that you are. Unicorns make me think of weirdness, uniqueness, um, and encouraging us to embrace that. The other thing I could say with this unicorn is that this whole story with this person might be a little bit weird. <laughs> like, it's not the typical like, oh, we met through a friend and then we started hanging out and we got closer together. Like you guys might have a really crazy way that you met or like the dynamic between the two of you, your positions in life, the way you fit together. It might seem weird or unconventional to some people, um, but that doesn't matter because that's what makes your story beautiful. And, you know, I feel like this cauliflower, it, it looks like a brain to me. <laughs> and I feel like your brain can kind of get in the way in this connection. The logical mind is a beautiful thing, but we need to find balance and we need to find a way that our logical brain and our spiritual, spiritual intuition can work hand in hand. They are not things that cancel each other out. They are not things that go against each other. They're things that go hand in hand. And I feel like sometimes your brain just might be overly, overly harsh, overly skeptical. And you know, cause your brain is like a, it, it's a pattern finder. It likes to find patterns. So your brain probably looks at like all of the other relationships around you. And then maybe looks at your connection and says, oh, this is a little bit abnormal. So this probably isn't gonna work out. Like this is not like a love that everybody else has or a dynamic or a story of meeting each other or a story of knowing of each other that everybody else has in their relationship. This is like an outlier. So I feel like it's like, I'm gonna discard the outlier or I'm not gonna believe in this. Like your brain is trying to analyze like that. And that's what our brain is very good at doing. But sometimes we have to say, thank you brain. That, that's, that was nice of you, but <laughs> your services are not needed at this time. Um, and I feel like you're really being called to embrace the weirdness of this situation and also of yourself. Um, this connection that you have and the way you find each other and the way you will come together, I think it's really, really special. And I think it's a really, really cool story. And if you guys chose this group and you're resonating with this, I would love to hear your story, whether you leave it in a comment or reach me in some other way. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's it's so cool too that we have Yule with Rebirth. Um, you know, it's funny. One thing that like kind of came to my mind with Yule and gratitude is like Yule makes me think of Christmas. So like if you ever gave this person, it, it could be a literal Christmas gift, but if you ever gave this person a gift or like wrote this person a letter, like sent them something, um... I feel like they really, really appreciate it and I feel like they hold on to it. Yeah, that was just a very specific message that came through. Um, but yeah, oh my God, I didn't even think about this when I was talking about like the logical part of your brain versus your spiritual intuition. Finding balance is really, really important and understanding that it's not one or the other, like it's not my head or my heart. Um, they're both important and there's a, a time and place for both of them. Um, but... 
I feel like we need to restore the balance a little bit because I feel like the brain is kind of taking over um, or the skeptical side of you is kind of taking over. But honestly, if I'm being honest, you could doubt you could doubt the situation all you want. You could doubt this connection all you want. And I feel like, because that guidebook said there's, there's nothing that you have to do at this point. So <laughs> I feel like at this point, no amount of doubting could really really change anything like it's okay just wait a few wait a few days or a few weeks or a few months or whatever it is and we'll prove you wrong like fine the universe is like try me <laughs> like okay if you're doubting that's fine but you're gonna see the opposite soon um if there was like some action that you guys needed to take then maybe doubting could get in the way um because you could be in a mindset like oh it's not gonna happen anyway so i'm not gonna bother but the, the guidebook freaking spoke, the protoplanetary disc spoke that there's nothing for you guys to worry about at this point. There's nothing for you guys, like you've already passed the, you're like past the point of no return. <laughs> that sounds kind of menacing, but like as long as you guys want this, the manifestation is coming. Like the seed has already been planted. You cannot stop the seed from germinating and growing now. So yeah. Okay, so I'm going to take a sip of water and we're going to get into your tarot now and let's find out about this next meeting. Ooh, I have to say the energy of this group is very, very exciting and very, very powerful. The previous groups had nice energy too, but in different ways. This one is just like... <clears throat> very intense and powerful and exciting and inspiring. Oh my gosh. I almost like threw the deck because I was <laughs> too excited. Okay. Let's do one more for good measure. This deck shuffles really nicely. All right. So the first thing that we want to see with regards to this next meeting is who is going to initiate it? Are they gonna initiate it? Are you gonna initiate it? Um, is spirit gonna initiate it? Meaning that you just happen to end up in the same place at the same time. Who is the initiator? Who is the initiator of this next meeting? Um, that's two cards at the same time. We have the Ace of Pentacles and the Hermit. Okay. I think that it's going to be you. And the reason I say that is because of this Hermit Crab. Um, for those of you who are watching and your person is a Virgo and you're not, or your person is an earth sign and you're not, then it, it could definitely be your person who's initiating it. But the reason I feel like for most of it, it's you is because of this hermit crab. Cause I was very much thinking of this as you, like the hermit crab who's moving around and they're, you know, everywhere they go, they're where they're supposed to be. Um, I feel like this is you. I feel like the hermit energy was representing you. And I have to say, like, <laughs> this this is feels like the strongest initiation that I've seen out of the groups. One group, it was like the person was really downplaying their emotions and was like, hey, like we should just like casually meet up. And then one of the groups was like, they bumped into each other. This one feels very deliberate and very straightforward and like very intense. We have a one and a nine here, which is the first to the last of single digit numbers. So it's like from A to Z. So there's something very thorough about this initiation as well. I feel like this person coming forward is not beating around the bush about what they're feeling and about what they want to do. Um, the Ace of Pentacles also talks about a very concrete offer that is being made. And in the hermit, we can even see this person is like holding their heart, almost like they're ready to hand it over to someone. I just saw 2255 and I don't know what it is. I've been seeing this repeating number so much 
in like when I'm filming readings. I don't remember if it's it was other piles in this reading or a reading before this one, but like repeating twos and fives are coming up a lot for everyone, which is, I don't know, it's weird. But actually it's not weird for you guys because repeating twos make me think of connections, partnerships, repeating fives make me think of change. There is a big change coming in this connection. So it's actually quite fitting for you guys. Um, but yes. Back to what I was saying, I think um, for many of you this is representing you making an initiation um, when the time feels right for you because as we've previously established, there's no point in this journey that you would have to like do something on purpose. Like you will do it when it feels right for you to do it and not because like oh, the reading said I have to do it. So do you know what I mean? It's gonna feel, it's gonna be at a time where it feels very, very natural to you. It's gonna be at a time where you have reflected a lot, which is what the hermit is about. And also earth energy in general um, is a more slow energy. Um, and I also think it's where you've reached a level of peace within yourself and you've reached a level of like confidence confidence, inner peace, and security within yourself. The hermit is really, really making me feel this. Um, and this might be kind of a transformation that you guys are going through. And I think that when you reach out to this person, like you're not gonna feel nervous at all. And you're also not gonna feel attached to any outcome. So like, oh, that might be a way of knowing like when it's time to reach out to them. If you're if you think of reaching out to them and you're like, oh my gosh, what if they don't respond well? What if they don't respond to me at all? What if they leave me on red? Like, or if you're worrying about how they're gonna receive you, then it's not time. Because what I'm seeing here is like, you've reached this level of like serenity. You've reached this level of Zen and this level of maturity and security within yourself where you're like, I'm okay with whatever happens. If they respond well, if they don't respond well, if they ignore me, whatever happens, I'm going to be okay because I feel okay with myself and I feel whole and complete within myself. So I'm just going to reach out. I'm going to be honest with them. I've thought a lot about how I feel about them. I've thought a lot about what I want them to know and I'm going to say everything and you know, leave nothing to guessing, leave nothing to the imagination. I'm going to be very concrete. I'm going to be very forward with them. And in a way, it's kind of like, you're doing this for yourself almost. Like, I'm gonna say everything that I wanna say so that I know moving forward, like I did everything that, that I could have done. I did everything that I could have done and then that's gonna make me okay with whatever the outcome is. Cause I know that I did what I was supposed to do and I'm not gonna have any regrets. So that's, that's the kind of feeling I think you would be going into it with. And so when you have that feeling of like, I'm okay with whatever happens, um, I feel whole and complete with myself, I'm gonna be happy no matter what, like this hermit, um, yeah, that's when you know that it's time. Interesting. And I mean, just so you guys know, like, <laughs> or a reminder, this whole reading is about the next time you see them. So clearly, if this is coming up as the initiation, we know that the response is going to be positive and we know that it is going to lead to you guys seeing each other. So, you know, <laughs> kind of already spoiled from the topic of this reading. Okay, so the next card that we have is the Five of Cups. This is an interesting five of cups because none of the cups are spilled. We have, oh, oh. In a weird way, this is kind of cute. We also have the four of cups. Interesting. Interesting. Okay. Mm. 
Mm -hmm. It makes sense that the, the deck is behaving this way now. Then we have, yeah, <laughs> the Seven of Pentacles comes out. And then we have the Page of Wands. And the bottom of the deck energy is the Hanged Man. Okay. So we do have, you guys could be sister signs actually, because we have Virgo and Pisces energy um, coming through here, which are, you know, opposite zodiac signs. So like if you're an Aries, then they could be a Libra. If you're a Gemini, they could be Sagittarius. You know, signs that are at the opposite end of the, you know. Okay, let me, <laughs> let me refresh my memory about what we've spoken about hold your commitment to your vision there's an imminent transformation there's an imminent change um what is the universe doing here okay <laughs> the universe the universe is ways i don't know okay so you have said your piece to this person you said everything that you've wanted to say um, I think you will ask to meet up with them and then when it comes to this five of cups energy and with this like Mars and Scorpio here as well, it's giving me this feeling of like you feeling super calm and like feeling super ready but then when you're on your way to go meet them, when you're going to see them, it's like you suddenly get nervous um we can see the five cups here i mentioned like they're not spilling so this is kind of um a special meaning for me um it, it feels like something is spilling out but the cups are still upright it was giving me that feeling of cold feet for some reason like you're starting to worry about things going wrong even though nothing has gone wrong you're starting to panic and i don't know why i just thought it was kind of sweet i guess because in the moment that you reach out to this person and in the moments leading up to meeting them i think you're feeling very like cool calm and collected and you're like yeah like i know what i'm gonna say to them and i'm gonna be okay no matter what happens but then it's like i don't know on the drive there to go see them or like on the train to go see them um you could be going to their house but i'm seeing you like going somewhere to meet up with them like going to where they are, going to their house or somewhere near their house or going somewhere near their work or something like that. And on the way there, that's when the nerves start creeping in. And that's when you start to feel like afraid. Like, what if something goes wrong? What if I'm going to lose this person? Ah. So then you get there, you're talking to this person and this is where the four of cups energy comes in. And I'm just like, this is what I'm sitting here with. Like, I wonder, sometimes I just wonder about the creative choices of the universe and like <laughs> why they choose to do things the way that they do. And I feel like with this protoplanetary discard, this is maybe something that you guys have asked yourself as well. Um, we saw with the unicorn that this journey has maybe been a little bit weird, a little bit unconventional. Um, and overwhelming at times and I do think that maybe this is a connection where you frequently ask yourself like why did it have to go this way why did things have to unfold like this like what is the universe trying to do here what is the universe trying to teach me um, and if I'm being honest just initially looking at what I see happening here I'm also kind of like huh that's curious like I wonder why it's happening this way um, I saw here that the universe is orchestrating a huge change in this connection, a huge positive change for you guys. When you meet this person, there's a feeling of you being underwhelmed, if I'm being honest, almost like you were expecting that this person would have changed more or would have grown more or would have more to say to you. And they just kind of came through short. Like they didn't give what they were supposed to give. Like that kind of feeling. Because the Four of Cups... The Four of Cups is about being like dissatisfied with what's going on. Not being content 
with the way things are going and I feel like it's really like a hard fall from this energy because I could see you guys like on your way going to see them and you're getting really really worked up about like oh my god what's gonna happen what's gonna happen and then you just like whoosh. and there's almost this feeling of like I was getting all nervous for this like I was getting nervous to see them for this there's a feeling of them like not delivering and that's why I'm like universe <laughs> like why sorry did I just like I think I might have spit a little bit I'm sorry why why did the universe choose to do it like this because it's clear that you guys are just evolving at different rates like you guys are going through these transitions you're going through these evolutions to have a rebirth and come together but it seems that you went through your trend your individual transition and your individual rebirth um significantly quicker so like you're at this very mature and wise and evolved state and i do think that your person will get there as well but at your next meeting they're not there yet so i'm like i wonder why the universe chose for you guys to meet at this juncture maybe there's something important in you seeing your person like this seeing that it's taking them a bit more time maybe because this is about staying committed to your manifestation maybe this is almost like testing your commitment like are you sure this is what you want because we can make it happen if it is but are you sure because it's almost like it would be a little bit it would be a little bit more of a wait even after the next time you see them for them to reach your level of growth and to reach your level of evolution it's interesting though we have the four of cups here because there is also this element of like there's something that you're not seeing and there's value in the things that you're not seeing so there could also be an encouragement here for you to keep an open mind because this person maybe has grown in different ways than what you were expecting like maybe you went into this meeting thinking like i i'm expecting my person to have learned a b c and i'm expecting them to have grown in a b c ways and like you're waiting to see that from them and then you do meet them and maybe this person has grown in um q r s ways maybe they've grown in different ways but because you're only looking for a b c i want to see a b c change in them i want them to have grown in a b c way maybe you're just looking out for that so much and getting disappointed that you don't see ABC, that you didn't notice that they were, they had grown in Q, whatever I said before, P, Q, R <laughs> ways. I might have gotten the order wrong before. Um, so maybe there is a piece of advice here to keep an open mind and to go into this meeting in a receptive state, in a listening state, and let them show you let them show you what they've been up to, how they've changed, what they learn, and accept that it might not be what, what you thought. It's interesting that we have the hanged man as the overarching energy. I'm thinking of the bottom of the deck as the overarching energy, and the hanged man is about seeing things from a new perspective and understanding that things are happening the way they're supposed to be. Um, you know, this person has their own journey of growth and has their own timeline and has their own order that they're going to learn their lessons in. And just because it's not the trajectory that you expected or the one that like, it sounds harsh, but like the one that suits your narrative best or like the narrative that you expected it doesn't mean that they're like objectively falling behind necessarily. So maybe, maybe the universe orchestrated this to kind of encourage you to keep an open mind and, you know, embrace, you've embraced yourself for where you're at in your journey and also to embrace them where they're at in their journey. Um, you know, like your rates of growth are a little bit different or your areas of growth are a little bit different. Are you are you okay with this kind of like 
testing your commitment. Because with the Seven of Pentacles here as well, it's funny, like I made a comment about how the deck was behaving before this card came out. I don't know if you could see the deck. Sometimes I hold it kind of far away because I don't want the card to like shoot out and mess everything up. But before this card came out, the deck kind of started taking a long time to reveal a card. It was still shuffling very neatly, like the cards were still staying very straight, which, which tells me everything is happening as it should be. Um, but because the card was taking some time to shoot out, it lets me know like, okay, there's a waiting period after this. So it's like, you're still kind of waiting on some growth from this person or waiting for some of your personal expectations to be met, which there's nothing wrong with. Um, and so, yeah, the seven of pentacles means that there is, that there is a wait, there's a wait happening. And page of wands, there's a couple different ways to interpret it. One could be that you are kind of feeling like this person is less mature than you because the page of wands can indicate someone who is lacking in maturity. Um, but there's also a wisdom in the page of wands like you could view the page of wands as childish or you could view the page of wands as childlike depending on your perspective and i also think that maybe the page of wands is here to remind us not to take things so seriously or to take things a little bit more in a light-hearted way because i feel like you could learn from this person i feel like you know, with the hanged man being about new perspectives, maybe they've grown in different ways. Maybe they've learned different lessons than what you were expecting. And maybe there's something that you can learn in there as well. Um, whether you choose to like keep waiting for this person or, or, you know, stick it out and be with this person, I can't tell you what to do, but I can say that it, it looks like there is a little bit of advice here to just keep an open mind to how they have change since you last saw them and, and there could be some things that you could learn from them so to not just deem them as like oh there's nothing here for me just because they haven't reached abc expectation that you were hoping for because they could have whatever i said before pqr s t u v that's i think that's right they could have other points to share with you interesting um yeah so I think that's all I'm seeing for this part of the reading. Just for a reminder, in the extended part of this reading, we're going to see um, when this meeting is going to happen and we're also going to see how your person will feel after the fact. So what will be going through their head and what impressions you left on them after this meeting. And we're going to see if this meeting will lead to anything. So will there be changes in this connection will there be new developments in this connection um, and if so when that is going to happen so if you guys are interested in seeing the extended version of this reading um, there will be a link in the description as well as in the pinned comment but if you're going to leave the reading here i want to say thank you very very much for letting me do this reading for you i hope you have a wonderful day or night whenever you're watching and i wish you all the best Please take good care of yourself, stay healthy. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe if you feel like doing that. I also have a Patreon, so if you guys are interested in seeing even more exclusive pick of cards where you get to choose the topic, that will be linked down below too. And I have a music channel. The song that you guys heard at the very start of this video was an original song, so if you're interested in listening to that or any of my other original songs, the music channel will be linked down below for you as well. Group number three, I am sending so much love to you, to your person, and to your spiritual teams. I thank you very much for being here, and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye! Hi, number fours. So if you guys chose the Fuchsite and the Way of the Panda Tarot, this is going to be a reading all about what will happen the next time you see the person you are thinking of. So we are just gonna look at a bunch of oracle cards and then we're gonna look at a bunch of tarot cards and see what is going on. Um, I did, in the intro of this video, do a more like deep, no, a specific, <laughs> specific breakdown of what exactly we're going to be looking at in this reading. So if you guys did want to know more specifically about that, there will be a timestamp 
um, in the description and the pinned comment. But basically, the gist of it is that in this reading, we're going to see um, the energies between you and your person right now, and then all of the events leading up to your next meeting, so like how it's all going to happen, and then of course what will happen the next time you see each other. And then there is going to be an extended reading today, and in that part of the reading we're going to see when this meeting will happen and how your person will feel after the fact, so what's going to be going through their head afterwards, what kind of impression did you leave on them, and things like that. And then we're also going to see if your next meeting will lead to any Thing in the future, meaning like is it going to lead to any changes in your connection, is it going to lead to any new developments, and if so, when would those be happening. So that's basically the breakdown, and yeah, let's get right into it. So we're going to start off by taking a look at some oracle cards. To start off we have Stellar Stream, Then we have Wholeness with Black Mulberry, Oops. <laughs> and we also have the number 33, which could be significant. That's funny, like in the first card we have double S, SS, and then we have double three. We have Purge, Cleanse, Clear, Release, and Love, Universal, Unconditional Love, and Source. Oh, interesting. Interesting. Okay, we have Embolic with Awakening, also very interesting. And then we have Jellyfish with Transparency. And finally, it doesn't have to be perfect. Ah, oh my gosh. Okay, I really, really feel for you and I really, really feel for this person as well. I am getting kind of an otherworldly vibe from you guys. I'm getting an otherworldly vibe from you, almost like you are not from here or your soul is not from here. And I know that most of us have origins somewhere other than Earth or we've had lifetimes somewhere other than Earth, but I feel like with this group, it's really, really standing out that you're probably most familiar, like your soul is probably most familiar and most at home with places other than Earth. And more specifically, and like no offense to earth, but like places that are more evolved than earth or places where oneness is more of a given, like oneness and unconditional love is more prevalent. Mm -hmm. The first thing that gave me this idea was the Stellar Stream card, and I actually think I'm going to look at the guidebook for this because I'm not entirely sure what this card means, but just when I looked at the image, it made me think of like little star seeds coming down to earth together. Um, so right away this made me think that you and this person you're thinking of might share a non-earth origin. You may have even been friends or companions or counterparts when you had lifetimes somewhere other than earth and like you're coming down here to earth together because you have a similar mission or a similar purpose or you just wanted to try out earth together. Um, this was like the very first thing that came to my mind with this card and I'm sorry, I, I don't know why I keep dropping cards <laughs> in this reading. Um, but then we got into purge, we got into love, and with these cards together, this made me think of some journey in which you are learning to purge everything that isn't universal, unconditional love, to remove everything that isn't unconditional love, and to remember that you are whole, and that you're always whole, because, and I'm sure you guys will know, when you come down here onto this earth, sometimes it's really, really hard to remember that. It's really hard to remember that you came from unconditional love, that you are unconditional love. And that unconditional love is where you will inevitably always come back to in the end. And I think that the connection that exists between you and this person that you're thinking of is made of this universal unconditional love. And I think that Earth, like I said, it's definitely a place where it's easy to forget this, it's easy to go astray, it's easy to fill our mind and our body and our psyche with all these things that aren't unconditional love and to sort of get lost or to sort of 
forget and I feel like I feel like you and this person's soul it's like you came to this earth almost to see if you could make it past this illusion like if you could pass this test and remember who you are which is very interesting and I was like I was just watching a a video about this which was it was a really really beautiful video and I'm actually gonna like uh, link it for you guys if you want to watch it but it was this person talking about you know memories that she had before being born and memories that she had speaking with higher beings and she was explaining how these higher beings told her that um, there are some people who in this journey in this lifetime they have on earth like they chose not to wake up during this lifetime like that was a, a conscious choice that their souls made before incarnating that like waking up spiritually wasn't really a part of their life this time and that's okay and then there's other people who did make the conscious decision of like i want to wake up in this lifetime i want to remember in this lifetime and i feel like i feel like you guys coming down to earth this time it's almost like you wanted to see if you could crack the code almost like you wanted to see if you could remember that this is a simulation you could remember that this is an illusion and come back to this universal unconditional love when the world I th and I think this 3-3 three, three is talking about the third dimension when it's throwing all of these things in your face like separation fear hatred ego all of these things that would would lead you to believe that this is not the truth like can you remember who you are can you get back to that and you guys may be, you know, I see sometimes people in the comments of my videos who feel like, you know, screw this earth, I'm not coming back or, you know, feel like this earth is really confusing or really, really feel like they don't belong here. And you guys might be a part of that crowd because I, I'm definitely not getting the feeling that you are like from here or that you're you're used to being here. And maybe at times you felt like, this illusion on earth is harder than you anticipated or you just feel really confused with the way things are done down here but this is like the very first really really strong energy that i'm getting from this group it's like you're kind of visiting here you're kind of testing things out here um i just noticed these two little sheep <laughs> lying together this is so cute um but yeah i definitely think you and this soul like this person i should say chose to come down here together and chose to have this experience together and so i think that this person if they're not already they will be a pretty um a pretty significant person in your life um i should also mention that we do have the symbol of water here this is the element of water and we also have aquarius so Cancer, Scorpio, Pisces, and Aquarius are present here. Um, Scorpio again with the number 13 because this is the number related to the death card in tarot aka the Scorpio card. And I would also say Aries because we have some little sheep here <laughs> that's reminding me of Aries. So if you or your person have these signs, please take this as a confirmation. If not, that is totally fine. I just mentioned the zodiac signs for extra confirmation for those who may need it. Um, but let's also take a look at what the guidebook says about this um, stellar stream card, because this one I feel like is not so straightforward. Stellar stream. And yeah, this group definitely has a different vibe. Definitely has a very special vibe. Okay, here we go. Stellar stream, just go with the flow. This is the Cosmos Oracle, by the way, for those of you who are interested. The stellar stream sweeps towards the place where the energy flow goes like a tidal force through the ocean. They are groups of stars that move together in the galaxy and do not depend on which way the wind is blowing, nor is there anything that can be done to stop it. The only thing that can resist it is resistance. It does not want to give up, just like when we force ourselves to walk against the wind, and the stronger the wind, the more force we need to control it. The same happens when we give up. We know that the wind may take us somewhere that our mind does not want to go. But surrendering to what it is will mean that we will inevitably go with the stellar stream that corresponds to our own evolution. Wow. So I, I'm just getting the feeling like you and this person like you chose to incarnate together with a group of souls because you have some similar 
mission together. I will say that I do believe this is a mission that you could fulfill by yourself. Like your union with this soul or with this soul group is not like one of the prerequisites for you to fulfill your calling and your purpose. But I think it's very, very likely that your souls did decide like we're going to do something together. We're going to collaborate on something together and fulfill some significant part of our soul's mission together. The number 33 can also talk about like collaboration, um, creativity, birthing something together, expansion. Um, and I also want to say you guys are pretty unstoppable. <laughs> I think that you have a ridiculous amount of divine support on your side. And I think that for those of you who worry about like straying off of your path, I think it would be very, very difficult. Like it would be way more difficult for you to stray off of your path than it would be to stay on it. Because reading from that guidebook, it just felt like your souls are so determined and you're moving, I think is steadfastly a word? <laughs> oh, I know it's a word. I don't know if it's the right one. Like you're moving with such force towards your objective that it would be, it would be very, very difficult to knock you off your course and knock you off your path. I feel like you are full speed ahead towards your destiny um, and towards everything that you were meant to be. So I feel like it would be especially... <laughs> silly especially silly especially futile for this group to worry about like straying or going the wrong way like it would be hard to go the wrong way even if you wanted to is kind of the vibe that i'm getting um and if you're here you're where you need to be if you're here you're going where you need to go um with this awakening card i really really feel like the meeting with this person or coming across this person's energy did trigger an awakening in you and I don't think you even had to really like physically meet them on this earth for them to trigger you for them to activate you it could be hearing about them it could be seeing them it could be like learning their name just knowing of them being exposed to their energy being exposed to their existence on this earth I think triggered a spiritual awakening in you because something about them made you start to remember this made you start to remember all of those things that we spoke about earlier remembering that you are universal unconditional love remembering your origins where you came from remembering that you're whole and that you've always been whole and i think that coming across this person's energy on this earth during this lifetime like maybe put you into this healing journey where you started to do a lot of purging of heavier energies. And it's so interesting that we have, first of all, it's so interesting that we have the number 13 here, which was making me think of death. This could be referring to an ego death, but I feel like it's more like, yeah, you're going through a death of all which is not you. And you're releasing all which is not you, aka all which is not universal, unconditional love. And transparency is like, you're exposed. You're here, you're your authentic self. You purged everything from within you that was not you or that was blurring your vision of who you truly are. And I really feel like something about the, the initial meeting with this person or the initial like energetic interaction with this person like catapulted you into that journey, into that purging, into that transformation, that purifying of yourself. So it looks like this is a very, very deeply, a very deeply spiritual connection. With this final card here, it doesn't have to be perfect. Um, I feel like sometimes you might place yourselves to a very, very high standard. It's like you have this awareness that you resonate with a higher dimension, that you resonate with a higher consciousness, a higher way of being, if you will. You might have this awareness that the earth and the 3D is kind of an elementary place for you. But at the same time, I feel like maybe sometimes you guys put yourselves to too high of a standard where you're moving through the world like, I have to be better than this. I have to be above this. Like I can't, 
I can't succumb to the ways of the ego. I can't succumb to the ways of human weaknesses and human vices if I am to be a spiritual being. Um, and so, like if you catch yourself having negative thoughts sometimes or having petty thoughts sometimes or having doubtful thoughts sometimes or like wanting to engage in more trivial 3D things, like that's okay because yes, all of this is true, but at the same time, you are here to have this temporary human experience and it's okay to engage and indulge in human behaviors and human habits and human strengths and weaknesses and pleasure and pain. And it's okay to be petty sometimes. It's okay to be messy. It's okay to be angry. It's okay to be jealous. It's okay to be pessimistic sometimes. I'm not saying strive to be those things, but I'm saying forgive yourself when you have those moments. Because yes, you are a divine, highly spiritual being. And yes, you're also a person, at least for now. And so you're gonna be a person sometimes and that's okay. Um, wow, this is definitely quite a different energy than the rest of the groups. It's very cool. And I'm really looking forward to seeing like, I feel like at this point in the reading, I'm still not entirely sure like what type of connection this is. So maybe we have a mixed group, but I, I can definitely say it's very, very powerful. So let's get into the tarot now. And so when we're looking at your next meeting, the first thing that we want to know is who is going to initiate this like who's going to initiate the communication to get you guys to meet each other is it are you going to initiate it are they going to initiate it um is spirit going to initiate it and just put the two of you together it does seem like you guys have a very big and very very powerful spiritual team so you definitely have a lot of support to come together So I feel like for this question in the other piles, I've been pulling two cards. So let's pull two cards for you guys. Who's going to initiate this next meeting? So we have the Ace of Cups. And we have the Chariot. Okay. So I think that this is referring to you. The Ace of Cups really gave me that feeling at first because something about the Ace of Cups makes me think of like the self. I think because very often, like this is a card where I'd be talking about like filling your own cup and doing what makes you happy. Um, and then we have the Chariot, which is very much like a go for it card. Go for it, make it happen, green light. Um, so yes, I think that this is you who is initiating the next meeting. Um, interesting. Okay, so I feel like this connection is definitely in the process of going through some sort of transformation or there's a transformation happening in this connection soon. Um, I do, if it's not clear already, I do want to say that this is a positive transformation, like with love, awakening, transparency, um, with you know the energies we've spoken about before a death of all that is not you and remembering that you're this unconditional love i feel like both of you guys are going through your own respective um spiritual awakenings i also want to say there's a lot of water energy here because these are both water cards this is all water signs and this is cancer and then we had water signs here and then we have a, a freaking jellyfish and we also have the number 13 which is making me think of scorpio so like Water seems to be a very significant sign for you guys. Um, if you and your person don't have a lot of water placements, this could be speaking about the highly spiritual nature of this con connection, um, the highly emotional nature of this connection. Um, also, the season of summer could be significant, like maybe you or this person are born in summer or you met in the summer season or something like that. Um, but I feel like something that you guys are overcoming it's weird it's like for some reason 
I feel like you guys have internalized this idea that you can't directly take action to meet your needs or like if there's something that you want and it's out of reach rather than your first thought being like okay I guess I I can just reach up and get it you think like oh I'm not allowed to do that so I have to wait for like someone else to come along who would be so kind and would show me so much mercy to give me this thing that I want and I feel like maybe this comes from a past of people directly or indirectly insinuating to you that like you can't be choosy, you can't be picky, you just have to take what you can get and be happy with what you get. Otherwise you're being like selfish or greedy. Like maybe somewhere along the line in your life you were made to feel like you were asking for too much or like your standards were too high. Cause I feel this thing internalized in you guys where like if you want something, it doesn't occur to you that you can ask for it or that you can make it happen. And like you just have to wait to see if it's gonna happen and if it doesn't, too bad there's kind of this like conscious or unconscious thing within you and the first thing that made me think that is this ace of cups card where we see like if we're thinking of the ace of cups as your fulfillment or that thing that you want it's like the panda's trying this sweet baby panda and this actually looks like a baby panda so maybe this is something that comes from your childhood like feeling like you're asking for too much um if you want something, you just have to wait and pray that you get it. But if you don't, too bad. Like, there's nothing you can do about it. Um, this little baby panda... Yeah, it's like this baby panda was made to feel like their desires or their needs are, like, so disproportionately big. And, like, the things that you want are just going to stay out of reach. Because this panda is trying... This panda is trying to reach in the cup and it seems like she can barely get in there. Um... And I think that this kind of, it's like this dynamic has been projected now onto your relationship with the universe or with spirit or with your spiritual team where it's like you feel like you can't ask the universe for help or like, or directly ask your spiritual team what you want. There's a thing about you like getting your needs met in a direct way where it's like you can just ask for it, you know, like, or you can just admit that you want it and you don't have to feel bad about it i think a big part of your journey is like learning how to say this is what i want and i'm not sorry for it and like i expect to get it <laughs> and i'll be very happy when i get this thank you very much like to learn how to ask for what you want like that and so i guess the way it's translating here is like i see you guys wanting to reach out to this person or wanting to come together with this person and you're like uh, if only, if only I could see them, if only I could hear from them and spirits kind of going like, y you realize you can make that happen, right? Like it just takes a simple message or it just takes a simple prayer or it just takes a simple like nudge or it, it just, I feel like there's some action you could take at this moment to make this happen, but it's like, it doesn't occur to you that that's something you can do or something that you're allowed to do because it's like, you mean I'm allowed to go after and get the things that I want and that doesn't make me overbearing or that doesn't make me greedy? Like I'm allowed to just be like, hey, I want this. And I think you're overcoming this and like, I love the transition of these cards because in this card we see all of the rainbow colors in the butterflies, in the clouds, it's like, this potential for change in your life. It's so beautiful, but it's out of reach. And then here you're taking all of that beautiful rainbow and you're making it into your wings and you're making it into your engine. And you're like, you're harnessing that rainbow power. Ah, it's kind of abstract, but I hope you know, like the idea that's being conveyed to me here. It's like, you're taking all of those colors out of the sky and bringing them down and using your dreams and your desires and that potential to fuel you. Like, let's put this into an action and let's make this happen. So your spiritual team is saying to you with these cards that like, if this is what you want, you can make this happen. There are things that you can do to make this happen, whether that's directly reaching out to this person or reaching out to a mutual person in your lives or doing something to make yourself visible, like putting yourself out there to make yourself visible 
or asking your spiritual team for help, um, there is something that you can do right now. And through this, you will learn that like, when I want something that's valid. And when I want something and there's something I can do about it, whether that's through words or actions, that's like my right to take those, to say those words or to take those actions. That's my right. That's not like a, a selfishness thing. That's not a greed thing. That's a right that I have. And like whoever made you learn that that's not something you should do, we're unlearning that, we're, we're stopping that. I also really like the transition of like this being a little baby panda and this being an adult panda who's like, I have a driver's license now. I can do whatever I want. I can go wherever I want. Like you can go after what you want. What you want is valid and it's not too much. It's not too much. So yeah, this is, this is you initiating it. Um, I'm actually going to pull a clarifier just to see maybe a couple clarifiers because I feel like this is quite a mixed group. A couple clarifiers to see how this could happen. How could this initiation happen? We have the Four of Cups. And the Eight of Pentacles. Hmm. Four of Cups, there's something that you're not seeing. So maybe it's not in such an obvious way. It's not in such an obvious way. Like, I feel like this is you thinking like, no, I can't do that. No, I can't say that. No, I can't reach out in this way. And Spirit's like, hello, hello, what about this option? So maybe it's kind of like, an unconventional or like inventive even or like a creative way that you're getting this person's attention and with the eight of pentacles here it might have to do with some skill of yours some talent of yours some project of yours um because i was getting that vibe before like you're making yourself visible to this person in some way so i feel like i don't know what it is <laughs> and you'll have to tell me like what you guys do for a living or like if you're working on some kind of creative projects or like putting yourself out there in some way because I feel like what I'm seeing here is that like sorry I just wanted to wait for the sirens to pass um I feel like what I'm seeing here is like it's like for some reason maybe you feel like you can't reach out to this person directly or like you can't go with the obvious ways of getting their attention and like spirits offering you this other it's so interesting and it looks exactly like the ace of cups it's like through doing something that you're good at or through doing, maybe some of you guys haven't met this person before, but it's like through doing something that you're good at, through doing something that you love, that I think is like a shared interest or a shared passion, or it shows your shared values with this person. It's like you're going to get their attention and they're going to be reaching out to you. I feel like for a lot of you, this is like a person that like you're going to collaborate with or like you love the same things, you're talented in the same things. Like this is the kind of vibe that I'm getting. And so I feel like more broadly, this isn't just about like go after what you want in the sense of like go after what you want and reach out to them. This is like go after what you want in life, pursue what you love, work on the thing that you love, invest your energy into what you love so like some of you guys are being called to start a project or like to put yourself out there more with a talent and like either direct that at this person or like make it seen to this person or something like that um because i think this person is going to see that you're doing well or see that you're really really good at what you do and be really inspired by that and then it's like you're making the first move, but you're getting their attention and then they're coming towards you. So you're kind of like both initiating it. You're like feeding off of each other's energy. You put out a, not put, is put out a feeler the way you say it? You put out a hook and they take it and then, <laughs> and then you get to talking and then you will decide to meet each other. So let's see 
how and where you're going to come together. How and where are you going to come together? So we have the Three of Swords. Interesting. Three of Swords and Justice. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, this is definitely a mixed group and this is definitely one of those groups like I want to hear your story. If this is resonating with you up until now, I want to hear your story and like what this connection is all about. I'm even getting the vibe like for some of you guys, yes, this reading is about your next meeting, but for some of you, I feel like this is also your first meeting. Um, and maybe you're even think thinking of someone, I don't know why I put quotes, but like the person that you're thinking of might be someone like you haven't met yet or someone like you don't know even who it is yet or they don't know who you are yet or something like that. Um, because there are, you know, people do have connections like that sometimes and I feel like maybe in this group um, there's a lot of that kind of vibe. Um, or like if this is someone you know already and you've been involved with already, I would definitely say you're stepping into a brand new energy and a brand new dynamic. Um, quite a bit of the time when I get death energy in the connection reading, it tells me like, oh, the dynamic that you previously had or the dynamic that you've had up until now, like there's no going back to that. You're creating a whole new dynamic. Um, we do have some Libra energy here now as well. Um, but yeah, it's, it's interesting. I feel like you guys are going to get to talking and you're going to have really great conversations like through text or something, you know, I think you're going to talk a lot about your shared interests, your shared passions, your talents, the projects that you're working on. I think you're very inspiring to each other. And one thing that I see often with the Eight of Pentacles when it comes to connections is that like you guys either have the same like niche interests or you have the same like unpopular opinions um, that you can't really share with other people or you're like a fan, a fangirl or like a nerd about a very specific thing that most people can't relate to. So when you find someone who also like, who is also a fan or a nerd of those things, you can like really, really um, get excited together, really, really get enthusiastic together. Like if I was out and about and I met someone who was also a tarot reader, you know, I'd be like, oh my God, blah, blah, blah. And I'd probably just start, you know, talking about tarot and getting really excited because it's not every day like, of course, online, I can talk to a lot of tarot readers, but it's not every day that, like, when I'm just out and about in my life, I would meet someone who reads tarot. So, like, any kind of niche, weird, not super relatable thing that you guys are into or something that you feel really, really strongly about, you would share that with this person and you get, like, really excited about it. Um, I can just see you and, and them, too. You know, think like you you just got off a shift, so you haven't checked your phone in a few hours, and like you know that there's gonna be a message from them waiting for you. Like even I'm getting excited, just like ooh, just thinking about it, because it's like, first of all, you're just happy to hear from them, and also you know it's gonna they're gonna be like spitting bars about the thing that you really like, and um, you know teaching you something new or like offering a fresh perspective so you guys are going to have amazing conversations i don't think actually i'm kind of backpedaling i actually don't think that you're immediately going to make plans to see each other i think at first you're just um you're just talking to each other and maybe you guys are still kind of struggling with being direct and like grabbing what you want because you know just because just because i pulled these two cards and said yeah you can go for it that doesn't automatically make it easy <laughs> or like feasible for you to do. Um, sometimes things are more complicated or sometimes we're just shy or sometimes we're just scared. So I feel like plans to meet will not immediately be made. You will be talking for just talking for some time. Uh, sometimes you'll be talking a lot frequently. Sometimes you'll be talking not as frequently. Um, but I think this dynamic of just like texting each other 
is going to go on for some time. And then with the Three of Swords, I'm taking this card very, very literally. And it's giving me this specific image of you guys. Imagine, you know, it's a rainy day. You're like, I don't feel like going anywhere. And, you know, you're snuggled up with a book. You have your glasses on. <laughs> like, I'm taking this very literally. Like, you're just at home. You're like, I didn't feel like doing anything today. Maybe you canceled some plans or maybe you turned down an invitation. You're like, it's just that kind of day. I just want to stay home and read or do whatever it is that you do. And then, like, you check social media and you see, like, this person was out and about today or, like, this person was at the place that you got invited to and you said no or like the place that you almost went but then you're like nah i don't feel like it or you were so wrapped up in your book or taking a bath or napping and then you realize that this person invited you out like three hours ago but now you missed your chance so there's something like that happening before you guys meet and the three of swords does talk about like a sadness or a disappointment. So I feel like you guys could, could take it pretty hard because I feel like you've been really, really excited to see this person. And it's like not every day that you guys can just link up. Like maybe you guys are both really busy or like they're really busy or something or you're not often in the same place. So there is this feeling of like, oh my God, I just missed I just missed the perfect chance to see them or I just missed a really, really rare chance to see them. And I'm, it's, it's almost like this feeling of, of feeling dumb. And I'm not, I'm not saying you're dumb, but it's like, oh my God, like if only, if only I checked my phone a few hours ago, maybe you like left it on silent by accident or something, or you weren't meaning to fall asleep for three hours. You know what I mean? There's something like that. And it's not like, Oh, you, you couldn't go see them because you were working. It's like something that, that could have been avoided. Like, it's so stupid, such a stupid thing, and I could have gone to see them. It's like that kind of vibe. Like, something just slipped your mind, or you were zoned out, and then you realized that they were where you were going to be, or they were actually calling you, and you missed it. And you're like, fuck, like, like I think you're actually going to be kicking yourself quite a bit. And I don't know, maybe this reading is like, a chance for that to not happen but you know things like this happen you know things like this happen and I feel like something like that is gonna happen um, and yeah I feel like you'll be kind of kicking yourself quite a bit for it and like when am I ever when am I gonna get a chance to see this person again and you could be feeling kind of down like if I'm being honest with this three of swords but right after this we have justice which tells me that everything is going to be okay because justice means that first of all you're going to get what you've been asking for you're going to get what you deserve and this tells me that the universe is favoring you so if an opportunity was taken away from you it's fair it's justice that the op a different opportunity is going to be given to you and it's probably going to be something better so if your opportunity um, well, I don't know what's a better or worse opportunity, but like you're going to get another chance in more favorable circumstances, in a better place, in a better environment. Maybe like if you're wanting to see this person, just the two of you, then that's what it's going to be. Like it's going to be better. It's going to be better circumstances. So very much easier said than done, but I think don't worry about this three of swords too much. Um, so yeah, it's like there's kind of a prolonged period of you guys just talking and you're like really really wanting to see them but it's not really happening and then there's a missed chance which you could take pretty hard but then justice is being served so this could be a little bit of a roller coaster if i'm being honest but you will finally see each other and with this justice there's something about you guys there's something about you guys coming together as equals okay this is a really weird example and it's like weirdly specific and I don't think that this is going to be most of your guys' situations. But, um, okay, let's say, um, okay, <laughs> I'm trying to figure out how to like, let's say this person is like a celebrity 
this is this is just an example so that you know the kind of vibe because because with justice this is telling me like you're coming together under better circumstances and you're coming together as equals because justice is like your equals so i'm not saying your person is a celebrity i'm just using this as a hypothetical example because it's very very easy to understand let's say this missed chance is like oh my gosh i could have gone to a meet and greet you know and then you're like really really kicking yourself like oh my god i could have gone to this meet and greet and i didn't go this sucks but then the new opportunity that the universe gives to you is like you're at you're like at a dinner with them or you're at some kind of event with them and you can just talk to them like a person so it's like the difference between you coming together in an environment where there's like a weird power dynamic and like you're not equals versus being able to come together where you're just like two people so that's the hypothetical example <laughs> that could be applied to many different situations um but it's that kind of vibe we're gonna your spiritual team is like we're gonna get you together in a way that is favorable a favorable environment for both of you guys to be transparent where there's no formalities where there's no weird like power dynamics or like different status or there's other people around and you have to act a certain way we're going to create a perfect environment for you where you can just be yourself and you can be equals is is the kind of vibe okay so with that let's see what's going to happen when you meet this person next Ooh, oh, okay. <laughs> we have the lovers. I don't know why I really feel like taking a lot of these imageries uh, literally. Um, when you see this person, there could be a moment where like it's raining and you don't have an umbrella and they're like come under my umbrella and you're like ah because <laughs> it's like oh my gosh we're really close together and they're sharing their umbrella with me and it's like you know you're getting um you're squeeing i don't know what the real word is for that like ee! you know <laughs> like this kind of vibe or i don't know like they gave you your their jacket or something like that and i feel like you are going to be in close quarters at some point um it could be like you were gonna take the bus home after or like take a cab home or like Uber or whatever. And they're like, oh no, let me drive you home. So you're like, ah, I'm in close quarters. Like I'm literally in the passenger seat of their car. I mean, there's something about you being in that kind of like physical proximity that I think is gonna make you like giddy. And this is Gemini energy. Air energy. Air energy and water energy is really strong. Aquarius, Libra, Gemini, Scorpio, Pisces with the fish and Cancer. Water and air is really strong. Okay, and then we also have the Five of Swords. Hmm. So, oh wait, I forgot to... Ah, I forgot to take the bottom of the deck energy, which I have been doing. So I'm going to put these together, the five of swords and the two of swords. Interesting. And there's a lot of like book imagery. Are you guys like writing something together, writing a book together? Um, okay. So, mm, mm, okay, okay, okay. I'm just thinking about this energy because this is like the overarching energy for you guys. And I'm going to touch on this in a second, but let's talk about what happens when you guys meet. Um, first, I'll start with the interpretation. Um, if you guys are not, if this is not like a romantic situation, I feel like with the lovers, this next meeting for you, like the theme, actually, even if you are romantic, the theme of this next meeting is confirmation. So you're going to get a lot of confirmation through this person's words and like what is talked about of things that you have been 
feeling intuitively, I want to literally say like for years, <laughs> for months or for even years, weird musings that you've had, weird gut feelings that you've had that you can't prove, but you just, you just feel it. You're going to be getting a lot of confirmation and there's something very validating about this next meeting. There's something very like, I'm not crazy. I feel like you guys have gotten a lot of clear cognizant insights about this connection, meaning that you just have gotten information from higher sources without any 3D source. Basically information just being plopped into your head about the nature of this person, about the purpose of this connection, about even about like this person's life and you know what they've lived up until now, things that have happened to them or things about their personality. You've just received this information from a higher source and you've had no way to prove it until now that you're with them and they're talking to you and they're telling you all of this stuff about, about themselves and about their life and you're like holy shit i already know all of this because i've dreamed about it or because it just popped into my head one day and i had no way of explaining why so it's this meeting is hugely confirming to you I think you've been feeling this person's energy for a really, really long time. And I think you've known this person for a really, really long time. Even, even like before you met them, you knew them and it's going to be really weird. <laughs> and there's going to be so much. Yeah. That's all I can say. So much confirmation and so much validation happening here. Um, if you guys are, if you guys are romantic, I will say, the lovers is making me think of some kind of like physical encounter, some kind of sexual encounter, some kind of intimate encounter going on here um, that is going to be very, very harmonious, very um, seamless, you know, just like puzzle pieces that are that fit together, <laughs> like that kind of vibe. Um, so, OK, let's talk about this two of swords and five of swords as this overarching energy. And it's interesting, we have the Eight of Cups in reverse. Eight of Cups is about walking away, giving up on something in reverse. Don't give up, don't walk away. <laughs> and I think that both of these are you. Both of these pandas are you in this card. First of all, I've been seeing freaking two, two, five, two, two, five, five so much. I don't know what it is. I've been, I feel like it's come out in several groups in this reading and in the previous reading I filmed, it's just following me everywhere. Um, but these kind of look like they're happening in the same location, right? There's like the gray floor, there's a book, there's quills, you know, it looks like, I don't know, like you guys, there's some, there's some project that you guys are meant to do. There's something that you're meant to write, something that you're meant to create, something that you're meant to publish, like a business that you're meant to do, a, a creative project that you're meant to do. And I feel like you guys have been on the fence about it or you were on the fence about it for a very, very long time. Like, should I do it? Should I go for it? Should I pursue this seriously? And I feel like at times you even consider just like giving up on it. Like before you even, it's like you gave up on a project or you gave up on a passion before you really even gave it a good chance. So you either like, you know, had a small bump in the road and you were like, ah, it's not worth it. Or like you, you decided that nothing was going to come of it before you even started. You're like, no, that's not viable anyway. Or you just let your fears get in the way. And I feel like this is past you or this is even current you because the two of swords is about indecision. I feel like this is you saying like you're either this panda is either like, should I write a book or the panda has already written an amazing book and it's like, should I publish it? Should I, should I post it? Should I share it? And they're very on the fence about it with this two of swords. Now going through all of this that you guys have gone through, <laughs> and having the experience that you've been through and considering what we saw here, like there's something about you pursuing what you love and putting yourself out there that will make you visible to this person. I feel like this is you because this is about like conflict, fighting, arguing, disagreement. This is 
future you <laughs> going back and like slapping your past self <laughs> like what are you talking about like what do you mean go for it go for it i'm thinking of what what you waiting for by gwen stefani like what you waiting what you wait the whole song is like what are you waiting for do it do the thing you know you want to like take a chance you stupid oh my god that's like the song that gave me my awakening as a human that's when i <laughs> that's when i woke up that's when i became a human is when i heard that song that was a pivotal song in my life it, it's actually why I, I live in japan in the first place because i listened to that song and i saw the music video and something just clicked in me but anyway it's a very very good song what you waiting for gwen stefani i'm gonna link it great song and i don't even have a remix that's how you know the original is just so good that i've never went looking for a remix even and I'm like, I always got a remix. I gave group three a remix, but anyway, sorry, I'm going on a tangent. Um, <laughs> this is you coming back to like shake your past self. Like, are you kidding? Are you kidding? Go for it. Or this is your future self coming back to shake you now. Like, man, go for it. What do you have to lose? And you have so much to gain, like publish the damn book, do the thing, do the project, put yourself out there. And this is the overarching theme of the reading. And this Eight of Cups in Reverse says, don't give up. Don't give up on your dream. Don't give up on your hope. Don't give up on this connection. And I'm not saying that like, you're not allowed to give up, but it's because I, I, I know that you don't want to. At least if you've made it this far in the reading, I don't think you want to give up. Wow. Yep, I, it makes sense, like, and there's others of you. There's others of you in this star seed group, in this stellar stream. There's others of you, there's like a group. Um, but yeah, you're like intrinsically involved in each other's awakening and, you know, spurring each other to pursue what you want, to go after what you want. Um, this is a beautiful, beautiful energy, um, but yeah. Oh my gosh, wow, and this one got pretty long. <laughs> Okay, um, group number four, these are all the messages I have for you, so I'm gonna end your reading here. Um, just to remind you guys, in the extended part of this reading, we're gonna see when this meeting is going to happen, what your person is gonna think after the fact, and is this meeting gonna lead to any changes or new developments in your connection, and if so, when are those gonna happen? So if you're interested in um, if you're interested in that part of the reading, there will be a link in the description as well as in the pinned comment. But if you're going to leave the reading here, I want to say thank you very, very much for letting me do this reading for you. I hope you have a wonderful day or night whenever you're watching and I wish you all the best. Please take good care of yourself, stay healthy. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe if you feel like doing that. I also have a Patreon, so if you guys are interested in seeing even more exclusive pick a cards where you get to choose the topic, that will be linked down below too. And I have a music channel. The song that you guys heard at the very start of this video was an original song, so if you're interested in listening to the full version of that song or any of my other ones, the music channel will be linked down below for you as well. Group number four, I'm sending you so much love. I'm sending lots of love to your person as well and to your big, beautiful spiritual team. Thank you very, very much for being here and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.